And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have one, two, three of my good brothers. Ha 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 We have the, uh, the, uh, the not quite Eye of Sauron, the living stack of comic books, and for one, and for once in a while, the late, the early and straight Good brother Doku. We have the me the flam the flamboyant flyer and the li and the living the living vault of useless knowledge. Good brother Flutter, and we have the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, the man of a thousand runes, and the bane of my fucking existence. Good brother Xanatrix. How the fuck we doing tonight? Bring me my moe crumpet. Oh. God, he's still doing this. <laughs> that, that should that should answer it for Doku. He's uh he's still completely fucking twacked. Um as for myself, it's been a weird day so far. Most of it has been spent asleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been good. Yeah, it's been good. Been a good day, so. So boy. So Let's um let's let's just let's dispense with the preamble. This week we're doing another reconstruction, and this reconstru and this reconstruction has to deal with the most toxic entry into the MCU. Although in recent years, should I be calling? I'm not sure if I should be calling it the MCU. Uh, because I hate to say it, but you're not wrong. That ten that tends to be the case. Um, but this week, the reconstruction process, where we take a look at at missed story opportunities and go into how we might how we might ha how we might handle them because we're smart asses. This week, Captain Marvel. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! Uh, I'm gonna drink because kill me now <laughs> before I get my moe crumpets. No, <sighs> I w there will be there will be no killing yet. Um, Poison my moe crumpets. I can only do th <laughs> there will be no killing you yet. I can only do that once. <laughs> and it's too easy. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you, so so now I'm an official MCU character. Gotcha. <laughs> Uh, see, it, it, Monk and I have the same, uh, outlook on this, Doku. Uh, if we must suffer, you all must suffer with us. Mm -hmm. And the suffering is eternal. Just throw, throw me off the cliff, put me in the gem, it'll be fine. Uh, that's too easy. Uh. Now... While Do while Doku is wa is wallowing in his wallowing in his own pain, um, <laughs> we may when we first when we did the first reconstruction thing, and I I began to realize that this was going to be a thing that would be a recurring factor in the in the monastery, and in, and in geek and in Geek Watch. Let's be fair as well. Um, I had I had de I had decided that it was inevitable that I was going to have to do. A, a um, MCU um, rel related attempt. Now, there were se there were several candidates that I, that I was th that I was thinking about. Um, I had thought of Black Panther, um, sim simply because you would simply because of the fact that I th I thought Umbaku was severely wasted in that movie, and Ki and Killmonger isn't really all that strong of an antagonist. Also, I wanted to address the fact that it has the it has the Superman problem with with the fact that that suit is w is way too invulnerable. Um. Another another possibility that I may that I may explore is um Iron Fist. Because Iron oh, Fist is one of my favorite characters, and that was a massive letdown. Yeah, it was a, it was yeah. a pretty bad. Uh, like the first episode had a lot of promise. And then everything just went into shit, rolling downhill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, season one was not not a good 
experience. Season 2 was better, but when you compare it to some of the other Netflix Marvel ru runs at that time, it doesn't hold up. No, it's the worst. It's the worst Netflix series. I'm not going to give you the suggestion I want to give you because it'll take you three or four hours to reconstruct. Try me. And yeah. Uh, nope. I've, oh, Endgame has Endgame has problems. Don't get me wrong. But uh, to be quite to be quite honest, Eve, there are there are some glaring problems with Endgame, but um. The f but when it c when it comes to reconstructing, there is a specific kind of badness that I need. Um, yeah, try doing the Inhumans. Um, to be to be honest, the to be honest, the Inhumans was dead on arrival. Yep. That's, yeah. That's why I say try to reconstruct it. That's why I say he'll be there for four or five hours because you have to rewrite the whole damn thing. Yeah, and unfortunately the unfortunately that project isn't the right kind of bad for what for what I'd want with um, reconstruction it's not it's not about turning bad into good but more of addressing missed up more of addressing missed opportunities yeah oh okay well um there's a few Thor movies I can toss your way <laughs> uh. um yeah I'm pretty sure you could but unfortunately they wouldn't be bad enough. Like I said, I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a specific kind of bad, and any, anything that goes too far one way or too far the other way isn't going to make the cut. But but, but the more I thought about it, the more all signs pointed to Captain Marvel. Now, um, in hindsight, given how, um, I know a lot of people are talking about how um bla how the Black Widow movie has has shat the bed. It is way too early to to try to try and attempt that. Ask me that question again in eight months. Yeah, and just and just insinuating that when like the main problem that people have with the movie is them is them not including a Tony Masters Taskmaster. Yeah, your arguments are already invalid. You know, I'm going to say this now, and I have a good feeling I will stand by this sentiment uh, 8, 10, 12 months, even two years from now. The only problem with the Black Widow movie is you guys didn't do it when you should have done it. You did it after the fact. I, I disagree. There are uh, there are other problems, and I may, I may examine that down, down the line, but... A lot of it would be me would be me cribbing notes from what Phil Mento said in his review of it, um, chief, mm. chiefly being that he that he said they said it was somebody trying to be Jason Bourne but not understanding how. Oh, see, I'm gonna just mildly disagree. I don't want to derail anything mm. longer than it needs to be. Iron Man two and Iron Man three weren't necessarily good movies. You could have had a Black Widow movie like this early in, you know late phase one, early phase two, and it still would have fit, in my opinion. It's the fact that it came after everything is said and done that just, it, it doesn't have any oomph. It feels out of place, and it's like, okay, cool, what's well, the point? We've already seen that, her story. But that's just one problem. He's talking that there's more than just that problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, But Iron Man 3 had problems similar, in my opinion. But, I don't know. I don't want to derail anything, so we'll, we'll leave that for another day. Oh. Uh but the big the big reason why I kept why I kept na why I kept um, nailing things down for the, for this for this one is aside from the fact that I have I have a soft spot for the early two thousands run of Miss Marvel, which is why I, when I was asking Shades to get to put together the splash screen for it, I specifically asked him to to give to put in one example from that old run, <laughs> just be just because I am a smart ass. <laughs> um. But also, but there's all, but there's all, but the other reason why I figured that this was going to be a challenge is even bef even before when this when this was announced that they were going to go with a Carol Danvers route for Captain Marvel, I had said that this is going to create issues because this is a character with baggage, and much in the same much in the same way that much in the same way that trying to do. A solo Venom movie is going to is going to have pro is going to have um, problems that need to be addressed. Granted, they addressed them all right in the in the film we got, but they still need to be addressed. And tr and of course, um, 
trying to do trying to do Venom the old fashioned way creates other problems, which was why, um, which is why trying to do it that approach with Spider Man three was always going to have issues. Um, you ha there are there are several there are several issues with trying to with trying to use this ca this character as a centerpiece. The first is the f is the fact that no matter how you slice it. Um, Captain Mar Captain Marvel as a character is inexorably linked to Marvel's eternal dick measuring contest that is the Kree Scroll War. Yep. The mm -hmm. the other big problem, and this was something this is something I pointed out during that during that time when Marvel Comics was really trying to pu really trying to push Captain Marvel as their answer to Wonder Woman, is the is the fact that. She has she has very she has very rarely ever be, ever been a a char a character that wasn't part of a group. Most of most of my time with time with her has been with some sort of organization, whether it be Sword, whether it be the Avengers, or or and or any other or and um or any other group that she's been in, and because of that, any Rogues Gallery that she has. Is not a rogues gallery by herself. Hmm. Yeah. That's that's what that's one of the that's one of the big that's one of the big <laughs> problems. Um. It's also it's in to put to put to use a similar kind of vein with this sort of a thing. Um. I said some I said something similar when I said that the best thing for. Miles Morales to establish himself more of a character is get out of Manhattan. Go to go to spend have him spend some time in one of the other boroughs so that he's not constantly in Peter Parker's shadow. Yeah. Oh, you uh, could that actually. Go ahead. That that kind of touches on something I I wanted to bring up in regards to this character. A lot of people say, "Oh." Uh, Captain Marvel, Carol, Dan Carol Danvers, uh, she can't be a good character, this or that, because it's all about, you know, my wokeism, my feminism. That. That's not entirely the case. I I believe that you could make a, a Carol Danvers movie that is good. The problem with Captain Marvel, with specifically the character and the time that you introduced her, is you're introducing her late game into the MCU. When the MCU has already started, that's pulling its source material, a material from 80s, mostly the 90s and 2000s, mm -hmm. and that's how the MCU has been established. Yeah, you're pulling some stuff like later MCU from the uh, Marvel Now comic run, but those are mostly complementary. It doesn't deviate too much from, again, the 90s to early 2000s run of Marvel. But then out of nowhere, you're dropping in an all-new, all-different all Marvel character, and she just doesn't fit. It, it, she doesn't fit within the MCU that you've created. She's out of place. She's awkward. It... She doesn't have she doesn't have any established character base within the MCU. She doesn't have any established uh, relationship with any of the other characters. She feels like she came from somewhere else in the multiverse, and there's no reason to put her in the larger story at that point. Uh, save it for after Endgame when everything's said and done, and the MCU transitions to the uh, the all new, all different. Uh, source material as opposed to you know Marvel now and everything that came before it you know, Brie Larson Captain Marvel Carol, Carol Danvers just doesn't fit that and I think that's why because a lot of normies aren't going to look at it and go oh she's shaved head feminist Captain Marvel most normies aren't going to look at that and go like oh that's the reason we don't like her the reason they don't like her is because they're wondering why the hell is she there she it, it do you need this character <laughs> like I mean, what is she doing in game? No one asked for this movie. There's no reason for her to be there. She has, you know, she's more powerful than apparently Thor. Why? What's the point? 
and save it for later. Say like keep that in your back pocket. I mean, and the, that's kind of what irritates me the most about Captain Marvel is you could have saved her and you could have put like a Black Widow movie or a Scarlet Witch movie. It, you could have done so many other things without introducing Captain Marvel. Maybe leave it to a cameo, yeah. and then wait for Endgame to finish, and then introduce Captain Marvel. That would have been perfectly fine. Uh, I don't see why it wouldn't. Even if there's bad uh, bad writing and you know, bad acting, whatever you want to call it, I still think that there is a place for this character, just not until the MCU storyline has finished, because she doesn't have a place in that Infinity arc. That's my opinion, at least. Yeah. Now, give, now given, that, given that, of course, when it comes to the actual film that, that we ended up getting... Um, the it tr the film tries to go tries to go on a th tries to go on a theme of 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 emo of emotion of emotion versus rationality um because that that's something that's hinted at and yet her and yet her mentor at the end at the end of it is very emotional and the and um the, and of course, the big, the bigger problem was, was this thing coming out around the same time as Wonder Woman, which, even though Wonder Woman, um, yeah, had, I remember that now. had its it had its issues in its third act, follow, following the trap that a lot of the D, a lot of the DCEU, um, had around that time, it did it did stick to its motif about whether all men are good or all men are bad or some or somewhere in between. And be, but the but the big the big problem with normally normally in these kind of sections I would do I would do a um, I would do a summary about the about the events of the original film, but there's not a whole lot that really happens. She's a she's a mem she's a member of the of the she's a Kree soldier early on. Get, oh. Shit ends up ha shit ends up happening. She ends up stranded on she ends up stranded on Earth in the in the in the nineteen nineties. Meets up with meets up with Nick Fury. Ends up ends up con ends up conf ends up confronting the the Kree. Um. Things things go downhill. Confront has a confrontation with her has a confrontation with her master. We see we see how Nick Fury got hit got got his lost eye in the dumbest way possible. Yeah, that was yeah. That was, one of the things that was actually uh, spoiled to me about this movie since I. That is one of the problems about this movie that I do have. It's like in Winter Soldier, you go you go with the whole route of I of right of the last the last time I trust them from when I trusted someone I lost an eye, and then we and then you cop out with that. But that was pretty bad. Like, I mean, I've seen some bad things and. In terms of long form storytelling, but wow, that's that that one actually I think might take the cake. That's a pretty. Did did they watch Iron Man two? Did they watch Captain America Civ uh, America Civil War? I that that's what you guys are gonna go with. It's just the the butt of a joke. Like okay, um, whatever you do, you. <laughs> But yeah, and the and the and the rest of it is is basic is basically a means to to set up her appearance in in Endgame, which was going to which was going to come out in a few months. I think it, I think Endgame came out about four or five months afterwards. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, I think it was like I think it was well, a little more like three or four. Mm -hmm. It was fairly uh, soon afterwards. Marvel. I think it was only like one quarter later, so I think it was like three or four months. Yeah, it was actually it was, a, it was an entire month. That's oh, that's even worse. Yeah, yeah, like a month and a half. From that doesn't even give the viewers me. enough time to digest the character, <laughs> let alone accept her as remotely part of the universe that you spent I don't know ten years developing. I just have to say this as like a brief aside. 
putting Captain uh, Captain Marvel in, uh, specifically Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel in this late in the game, really undermines not only Black Widow but also Gamora and Nebula. Hey, those are two characters that have a fairly well established lore within the MCU, and you know there's a decent amount of character development going on there. You you could I. I'm not going to make the argument, but somebody could easily make the argument that a Gamora Nebula movie is more justified than a Captain Marvel movie that late in the game. Right. Mm-hmm. And just my opinion, it can it already established rich character development, good actresses behind them. They, if you want to go, like, you need a female-led movie, well, there you, you got Gamora Nebula. Come on, man, like, and also, those are two characters that, even in the comic book series, despite having history, aren't really that well explored or well known. I mean, I I would actually really like to see a movie that revolves around uh, the relationship between uh, Nebula and Gamora. That I think that could yeah, be a really fun. really good movie. Yeah. However, rails. Yes. Yep. Back on. So. Give, so given given all of the, given all of what we meant all of what we mentioned, um, the 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 fact of the matter is that that that, that this this very much felt like a throwaway tide over until what people were actually actually wanting to see. So with and because of that it because of that it's going to go down when it comes to the film version as for film versions of of the Marvel Cinematic. As the as the biggest bl- as one of the bigger blown opportunities or just misfires. So with all of that said, with all of with all of that preamble, let us have a go. <laughs> so the meat and potatoes. Yeah. The meat, the meat, potatoes, and spaghetti. The spaghetti. <laughs> and the oh, normal nope. spaghetti or gastro spaghetti. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, Monk, mm-hmm. something I've actually commonly heard as a descriptor, and this ties into uh, why this is such a missed opportunity, is uh, I ha- a very unique and neat um, metaphor for how the MCU was working. MCU had its major releases, things like the Iron Man series, the Avengers series, etc. And then it had quote unquote lesser known faces mm-hmm. because I, I I can think of some of the smaller MCU members being exposed. I mean Doctor Strange as a movie for those of us who were in the know about the comics were looking forward to something spectacular because Doctor Strange is Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. But to most moviegoers they're not gonna have any idea who that is. And the description I always heard uh, when it came to Captain Marvel was this is the tide over between Infinity War and Endgame, and they likened it to drinks. That Infinity War was a nice uh, tall glass of your favorite beverage, Captain Marvel was flavorless water, and Endgame was the next very nice tasty beverage that was taking time to create. Um, well, Zana, don't forget at the end of uh, Infinity War the post credit scene was teasing Captain Marvel. So I did. Well, the point I'm getting, the point I'm getting at Doku though, is if that's the case, it should have been another tasty drink. You want to keep the audience engaged. Instead, it felt flat and empty. And that's, that's one of the biggest things we're going to have to somehow get over with a character like Carol Danvers. Okay. Which, uh, like I said, there's a lot. There's a lot of things that there's a lot of things that we'd have to we'd have to address. And um, mm-hmm. uh, let's get let's get the obvious out of the way. Um, norm, normally, I normally I don't do I don't do recasting. Um, I feel in I feel in this case it's inevitable that we'd have to. Yeah, um, Brie yeah. Larson's only good role has been Envy Adams in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Fuck y'all who think otherwise. Um, I was gonna say her role in Kong Skull Island, but yeah, there's that too. But the but the um 
And the th it's it's telling that you bring up both of those because those are both supporting roles, and and you're having somebody who's been a been a B play been a B player th and thrusting them into into the um, into the top into the top seed. Yeah, Traveling. she uh, and it's very clear due to her conduct and her acting chops that top billing is uh not for her. Which it's not a, it's not a knock. Some pe some people some people. Some people have, some people have it, some people don't. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, as far now as far as who we as far as who we'd recast, we were jo we were joking about Kir about Kirsten Dunst, but I but I think <laughs> um I think the I think the actual name that we that is utilized in this kind of thing is irre is irrelevant. That's not, just that's not that we recast point. someone. Recast, recast someone and have them have them actually go through the have them actually go through the rigors the way anyone else would. Um, mm -hmm. When and when I talk about rigors, um, if you need it, if you need a good comparative example, um, consider consider all consider all the fit all the um, physical training that um, Salazar went through for Alita. Mm -hmm. And. You know, you know, do, you know, doing doing a lot, doing a lot of martial arts training, a lot of physical training, um, a fair a fair bit of gymnastics because you got a because you've got a mocap that kind of stuff. Yep. <clears throat> or uh, or you know, the rigors Reeves go through goes through for any of the action flicks he's ever been in. Yeah. <laughs> Just go look up his uh his gunplay uh his gunplay videos uh with Terran Tactical. Everybody, you'll see what we're talking about. Yeah. <sighs> and because, go ahead. I was gonna say with a uh, with somebody like Captain Marvel, with or in this case Ms. Marvel, whatever we're gonna go with in this movie mm -hmm. with the name. Um, she does a lot of actual, pretty strenuous combat. Yeah. Um, so you need somebody who can replicate that. There's there's also the fact that um, Carol Danvers before 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 that name before that name. Is is supposed is supposed to be a pilot, and, and would have the standard it's uh, an airport pilot, yeah, and thus would have the standard PT uh, of any uh, military personnel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, we're not at, we're not asking for anybody to go to go through to go through basic for two years, but at the very at the very least, fake it till you make it. Um. But that brings us to that brings us to a trickier issue that we that we'd have to deal with, and that is placement. So, in uh, in the real world, it was placed right in between. The film was placed right in between Infinity War and Endgame. Um. Now, the big question that we ha the big question that we'd have to address first is. Do we keep that positioning, or do we move it earlier or later in the timeline? I'm actually going to say keep the positioning where it is, because you can actually use this film as a way to flush out all of the events leading up to Infinity War, and then also what leads into Endgame as a outsider looking in. But the caveat to that is going to be this is not going to be a 90 minute film. It's going to have to be a two hour long film. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're going to have to address quite a few things. Not just what's going on with the Kree invasion of Earth, but you're also going to have to address the, uh, the events of Guardians of the Galaxy, what went on with Thanos, and when he was going on his galactic rampage. It, you're going to have to touch on a lot of different things just to make it believable for the audience as to why didn't she show up when the Kree invaded Earth? Why didn't she show up during an Infinity War? What it quite like the Hest in uh, Endgame. Where were you? What were you doing? I mean, those are a lot of questions that you're going to have to give answers uh, towards so that the audience, when they do see her appearance in Endgame, actually makes sense. Uh, that is a tall order. I'm not saying it can't be achieved, but that's that's actually the perfect type of thing you can do with this character because she has been going around and like <laughs> there there is all this stuff going on. Like 
and we've already established it with, again, the Guardians of the Galaxy, the Kree, what's going on with Thanos. We know that it's not just Earth that's under siege. Don't so you're, you can... You're going around in circles. My point is, you can answer those questions using this movie if you do it the right way. Right. But it's not going to be a short movie. Um, personally, I think that uh, due to the abruptness of her appearance in Endgame... Uh, there were plenty of people who didn't go watch Captain Marvel, but did watch Endgame. Mm -hmm. Place it after Endgame as a as a as a exploring her sort of thing. Since she does, unlike Black Widow, who's been in multiple movies, um, you could use this one pretty easily since it was already technically a prequel movie for her personal story to explain who this new person that just showed up is and then continue into the rest of the MCU. Yeah. Now give now um that brings me that brings me to the other question. Since we are since we are not since we are since since we are it's the more I think about it the more I'm the more I'm more liable to um to do to do it after um endgame where the where the board has been more or less reset and a lot of a lot of a lot of the a lot of the big a lot of the trinity has um has de has decided to decided to hang it up for in one form or another whether it be whether it be Steve whether it be Steve retiring and ha and handing the mantle over the falcon or um or uh, or um to or Tony de Tony deciding to deciding to focus more on being a parent that rather than uh, rather than deal, rather than dealing with being uh, being Iron Man, or um or Th or Thor looking for looking for a potential new um Asgard. Um. And as a bit as a bit of an aside, if we're doing this afterwards, the fact I'm um I'm go I'm going with I'm going with the notion that just being around the just being around the insanity that the Guardians have to deal with, um, he is no longer fat. Because Fat Thor was a fucking stupid idea, and I'm killing that dead. <laughs> if I had, if I had the time, I would, I would, I would, um, I would, ins I would insert some of the aspects of, um, of Drinker's fixing of Fat Thor into this, but that's be, but that's beyond the scope here. <laughs> although he did, although he did a really good job with, with that version of, Th with that version of, um, Thor. Um, Actually, that version of Thor was pretty funny. The, I did like it. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but just, I'm, I'm only. It gonna, doesn't. I'm gonna. It doesn't fit. I know. Yeah. But the thing, the the thing, it the thing is, if we're if we're do if we're doing if we're doing a, if we're doing afterward, um, would it would you? Would the angle that we should be taking with is that now that now that Th now that Thanos is de Thanos is dead and who knows what who knows what has happened to the Infinity Stones if they're even if they're even still around um should the should the uh, should we go with the idea that with that with the with um that with that out of the picture that the Kree are cons are considering their in, their inv their invasion of earth that's that's actually the reason i don't like the idea of putting uh the first captain marvel movie like a follow up sure but the first one i don't like having after a in uh end game happens because yes thanos is a thing guardians of the galaxy is a thing but you have a perfect opportunity to establish the Kree, not how they were in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, but as a legitimate galactic threat. Because the Guardians didn't establish the Kree as a, a threat the same way that the Chitauri were in uh, the first which, Avengers movie. Which is, wh which is why, uh, which is why I'm of the mind. Uh, the more I think about, it, the more I'm of the mindset of doing this, of doing this after Endgame instead, instead of in instead of in between Infinity War and Endgame. But doesn't it seem a little bit jarring to have the Kree just come out of nowhere as the new new galactic threat with no with, with, no. with only the Guardians no, as that's no not, that's because... not my plan. What 
the the reason that the reason I'd be doing this kind of thing is it is um I would be using the I would be using this fi this hypothetical film as the as the setup to to what would to what would be the next Avengers movie that is loosely inspired by Secret Invasion. So I still feel like you should have it introduced before Endgame. That's a, that is not a I would not I would not advise that simply because everybody's mind is going to be on Thanos at that time. You're double dipping. Introduce. You already have. You already I have. Suppose. You already have one well, existential threat in Thanos, and then you're going to try and introduce another. In you're going to try and introduce another in. Oh, I'm not. I'm not saying make them. You know the big. I'm saying you should introduce it and have you know have it sitting on the back burner because the only the only thing we got in regards to the Kree was the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Like nobody even hey, go ask any MCU fan. Who doesn't know anything about the comic books, let alone Secret War, Secret Invasion? It's, they don't know who the hell the Kree are. It's still too. It's still too crowded to do it in. To do it in that, I was, I was always, I was always of the opinion that when it came to, since Infinity War and Endgame are are essentially, are essentially one movie split into two parts, um, or one story split into two parts, um, it should be it should be done the way the way certain events were done back in the day, like say, like say Days of Future Past, where all this, all the separate lines around when that event was going down were suspended and then re and then reactivated after the event. But see, now you're going to have the problem of buildup in terms of all these uh, all these characters are going to have to have at least one more movie just to introduce the threat of the Kree, so we can build back up to that next team up movie where the Kree are now the next Thanos. That's it. That is. That's what... Go ahead. I was going to say that's that's how the MCU has always worked. So yes, you're going to have that issue. It it because that's going to be the issue whether you put Captain Marvel prior to Endgame or after. In addition, Captain Marvel can be used as the touchstone, the foundation for introducing both the Kree and the Scroll. Um, because God knows no, no Fantastic Four movie is ever going to introduce the Scroll properly. <laughs> no, no. But, but that's that's kind of my point, though, is why I think the first Captain Marvel movie should should still take place bef after Infinity War, but before Endgame. And I do think there should have been one or two movies uh, in between there well, as we, well, well, just we to have, kind of pad things have, out. We don't have that luxury. We just have this one. We just have this one movie, and I'm I'm put. I'm putting my. Um, this is one of those cases where I'm putting my foot down. We're go. We're going afterward. All right. Fair enough. It, um, you, you are the monk of the monastery. Um. Just be. Just because if we keep going about, about this route, we're going to be going around in circles, and we're not going to get anything done. It'll be. It'll be like delegating in New York City. <laughs> fair enough. Um. I'll drink to that. that. Is, for the record, that is not a current year politics joke. That is a 1776 joke. Yep. Because we do not abstain courteously, we just say yeah. fuck, we just say fuck off. <laughs> Ironically, uh, enough, that's actually how we get things done. But because 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 of that, now the this is this is where this is where the the other big complication that we that has to be set up is we do we do ha we do is when it comes to. When it comes to when it comes to Danvers as a character, first we have the whole thing of are we go, are we going to go with the no, are we going to go with the notion of her um, of her be, of her being of her being recruited by the by the Kree at one at one point and ha, and had her memories erased, or are we or are we going with a different approach when it comes to her origin? It depends if you want to go with the secret. Uh, secret war and secret inv invasion plot line, or if you want to scrap that for something completely different. Um, I did imp I did imply earlier that I'm that I'm that I would be using this kind of thing up to s to set up um, a, a not direct not a direct copy of secret invasion, but something that is taking elements from it and from the Kree Scroll War. Especially, especially since now that now that the now that the galactic community has has seen all the craziness that's going on in this one planet, that's go that's going to bring a lot of attention to it. 
even if it's even if it's attention that's not that's going to be indirect. So, I am I am I am of the I am of the opinion of you of um of go of going with going with the notion of ha of having of having her be having her be sh um Shanghai the whole thing of her Shanghai out of out of her pi out of her um out of her pilot seat dur during during a te during a test flight and get and getting taken in by the Kree. I think that I because th we'd need we'd need to set her because in order to do this kind of thing we'd first need to set her up as a as a Kree soldier first before the whole rebellion thing can take place. If if that's the case, so uh, it sounds like you're going with the uh Secret War, Secret Invasion plotline from the comics. And it's taking place after in, uh, Endgame. There is one thing that I am staunchly of the belief of, and I don't think there's any way around this. You're gonna have to go with setting up the character, and yes, memory erased, she gets recruited. But the fact of the matter is, at the end of the first movie, Carol Danvers has to lose she doesn't win that's the only way you set up that that next set that next stage of the mcu with the next big bad the next big threat especially considering how powerful she is or at least how powerful they want to set her up to be the only way you do that is if she has you know knocked on the head memory wiped recruited by the enemy realize this and that she has to lose there's no way she can win in the first movie I see. she has to have an she has to have that existential threat and now is going if she's going to be the next tony stark or the next a uh, person trying to go around to recruit everyone around her and gather everyone to her because your petty squabbles and differences mean nothing because there is this bigger thing happening she has to lose in that first movie there's no way around that Doku, I I'm not I'm not saying I disagree, but you're but um, you're but you're kind you're kind of going eyes bigger than the stomach. <laughs> I mean, I know we're rewriting the movie, but if we're talking in the scheme of the MCU, it if it's not just a one-off throwaway movie, it then it's yeah, just the po the point the point is, is that you're th you're thinking about the ending when we're when it, when we're, we're when we're not even out of the first act yet. I'm just saying that's how you have to introduce the character. I, I, I'm sorry, the way they do, this is why the movie failed. It's because they introduced us to a Mary Sue who, I mean, maybe she's not as bad as Ray, but the reason that movie failed is because it didn't have it didn't have a place within the larger plot line of the MCU. And I think that's really why Captain Marvel failed. So I think we do have to address where does this fit in in the larger plot line, the Any, larger anyways, story arc. Rails. All right. <laughs> you have you have this you have this habit, Doku, and uh, and of uh, of not uh, not being able to let an argument die. So I got to put my foot down a little bit harsher than usual. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Now, given the appro the approach that the approach that I'm con the approach that I'm considering, it as far as as far as why the Cree, why the Cree would t why the Cree would take her, um. Is there's there's a couple there's a couple of, there's a couple of approaches that I, that I can see go that I can see going with the serious approach is because of the because of the fact that the, that um that the they believe that the scroll are also are also are also putting their putting their own feet within Earth that they that they took her they took her assuming that she that she was a that she was a scroll um. That's one. That's one approach. The other, the other, is the is the classic know your know your enemy kind of thing, so that they'd have an, they'd have an agent on Earth when the time came. You know, trying to take a page out of their enemy's playbook. Mm -hmm. Right now, the Cree were. Remind me, were the Cree fairly fairly well uh, versed at identifying who was a scroll and who was not? From what I from what I recall, not really. 
Then her being taken because they suspect her of being a scroll because they don't understand humanity in the first place makes more sense. Yeah. The, the act of taking her to be a double agent instead would imply that they already knew she wasn't a scroll. Mm -hmm. um, and if they don't have the ability to separate scrolls from humans fairly effectively, it makes more sense to go, she acts kind of weird. Maybe she's a scroll. Let's take her. The Kree have have always this, um, have always had a bit of a scientific bent to them. Mm. Um. What now? Gr granted, they granted they're just as assholeish as as the as the scroll, but um. But they yeah, but Go ahead. I was gonna say, but much like the Knights Templar, they think they're actually doing good and justify everything. Yeah. Not, exa not exactly, not exactly helped by the by the by the most infamous villain when it comes to the when it comes to the scrolls being referred to as the accuser. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and going around with a big ass warhammer. Mm -hmm. I still have a lot of issues with that depiction of the Kree because it's not accurate to the source material. But that's a different topic. Don't get lost in the weeds, Doku. But, Xana, for what you were saying, the Kree actually were... And they could tell who the scroll were unless the scroll were hiding their identities. Uh, they're, that That's kind of the reason the scroll had that whole uh, let's hide from the people that are trying to uh, galactic crusade us. Well, and, yes, I, I, I realize this. A, a disguised scroll is hard to determine from the real person. But I was, yeah, but they will... The, the Kree are actually the few that can actually detect that, uh, no, you're lying. They're, think of them as a, like the Inquisition. They will either kill you or force you to admit that you're a scroll, even if you're not. So it would be strange for them to take one in unless there was an ulterior motive. But hey, that could actually be a good plot device. Well, again, again, again the, the, bit. The big issue is that we that no matter if we're ke if we're keeping relatively to what we have to work with, we have to, we have to have some means of the, of them to, of them taking in a, them taking in a human. And this is, and um this is the, these two are the, these two are the best ones I can come up with and the and the mistaken identity thing I'm w I'm willing to go with, um obviously what because I could easily I could easily see that um. That they had that um, they had a, they had an impression of the of the humans that was largely out of date. Um, up until up until this point. So the idea the idea of even humans having having um terrestrial flight, would um, would be would be a bit of an anomaly. Hmm. It's a it's a cl it's a classic is a classic kind of setup. Um, it's a classic hubris setup. They don't think that anybody's as advanced as they are. Yeah, we've seen we we've seen we've seen it we've seen it plenty of times. There's the infamous thing with the Eldar where they refer to humans as Mon Kai. Monkey. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, let me let me do my Dennis Hopper impression. <laughs> Monkey. There we go. But <laughs> the thing. But give now, given that given that, this brings me this brings me to one of the, to one of the other big missed opportunities, which is wasting Jude Law. Yeah. Uh, so that one's all you guys. I have nothing to say about this. Um, his char his oh. character his the attempt is to clearly be the mentor who's trying to who's trying to tell her, um. Stop! Stop trying to stop! Rea stop trying to react so oh, so um emotionally. Other, because when you do, you get you end up getting in trouble. Um, you know, stop thinking with your heart and start and start thinking with your head. Um, mm -hmm. in in the film, he's in the film, he's he's just he's just a, he's just a bog standard Kree soldier who's t who's t who's um her who's her mentor. I am of the opinion that in, instead of doing that, we should have this per we should have this person be Marvel. 
instead of Von Rog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And as far as far as the whole as far as the whole mentor and student thing, I'd pr I'd be perfectly willing to go with that. I do want to go. I do want to keep the recklessness that e even though even though her memory has been has been erased and been conditioned to think that she was taken in by the Kree as a chi as a child, um. She that that some old ha some old habits die hard, mm -hmm. chief um, chief among them being well a reckless it a reckless fool. Mm -hmm. Um. And the bi the big re the big reason that I'd that I'd want to go with this is when when um. A key, a key misunderstanding when it comes to a character like this and why. The attempt in the comics to try and make her into Marvel's version of Wonder Woman was always going to fail, no matter how no matter how good of a writer you were. Um, in fact, yeah, you'd have to you'd have to be the you'd have to be a you'd have. To, I don't even I don't even I don't even think the best damn writers on the planet could make could make that work for one simple reason. The way Marvel has written has written characters since the seventies doesn't allow for it. No, it doesn't. There's there's an old there's an old adage that DC creates characters that you that you're supposed to look up to, Marvel creates characters that you're supposed to relate to. And even in the even in the MCU, this to a degree is applicable. So trying to trying to make um, Carol Danvers this pe this more paragon like character was doomed to fail. We ha up until this point, even even the film going audience has been used to, um, to a lot of a lot of characters in the MCU, be being characters with some with some sort of some sort of baggage, whether it be the, whether it be the, uh, all this all the stuff that happens with Tony, all the all the um all the foolish all the foolishness and humbling that ha that happened with Thor, um. The the um so, the self doubt cycles that St that Steve Rogers had, there's a, there's something to overcome in that regard. Um, or in the case of someone like Doctor Strange, his his um hubris. And because uh, because of because of that, I think I think that having I think that having her be re be reckless. And get and getting in, and getting into a lot of trouble is is something that we that we should stick with, and and the moral the moral center in this regard would be Marvel. You know, as some as somebody who as somebody who in this case would be would I don't think it, I don't think it would be too much of a stretch to put Marvel in the in the role of seasoned of a of seasoned soldier. Like we don't need. We, I don't think it would either. Um, and yes, once once again, I am do, once again I am kind of doing the passing the passing the torch kind of story with this with this approach. Mm -hmm. And is it is it something that? Yes, this is something that we've done multiple times in past reconstructions, but I do think I do think that it that um in this ca in this kind of case it's warranted because what because the story there are two stories that we're, that we're kind of telling here. The first is see is seeing is seeing Carol Danvers become become the next Captain Marvel. The the second the second story is of is of course the is of course the first wave of of, of the secret invasion and tr and and her being the one who realizes how how bad things are going to get mm -hmm. um, well that would make sense though because if you're still sticking with the backstory of uh Carol Danvers greenhorn soldier gets memory wiped gets taken up by the Kree gets trained by season soldier and you know comes into her own i mean that's that's a fairly easy plot line to do in a single movie mm -hmm. and it would make sense it gives you good character development yeah it also prevents the merging of marvel with the supreme intelligence which was yeah. a dumb decision that was pretty dumb Ugh. 
and because because of because of that instead um i would i would pro i would probably go with the with the notion that um when she ends up go when she ends up going through the tr the treatment in order to get her uh, in order to get her abilities she's 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 told that she's told that the control device that's that's within her is is a mean is a means to is a means to not 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 shackle her powers or put it in check but but to to make sure that they don't overwhelm her mm -hmm. um if you, if i need to use a more weeb example cons consider how consider how how dangerous um one for all is yeah and also, it makes sense, I guess, considering the context of if you're going to bring this person in, especially not knowing if they're a scroll, it, yeah, it, you would want this person to be able to take on the uh, greater threat that we haven't exactly presented to the audience. So, yeah, you definitely want that person to be, you know, tip top shape. So. Mm -hmm. You can't handle it now, but we're we're essentially grooming you to be a basically a super soldier on a galactic level. Yeah, it would actually make perfect sense for the storyline to do something along those lines. Yeah. Now, given given that given that kind of given that kind of setup, I would um, I would not have I would not have her leaving leading her own team as as it's as it's shown in the as it's shown in the actual film. Um, I would have Marvel leading that team, and her and her being a and her being a um, not even a second, but more, but but ju but just a but the equivalent of a grunt on that, who and who ends a greenhorn, yeah, who's ha who's had the training but doesn't have the practical experience. Yep. Um, well, and that's what blood. she should be in the first movie as a greenhorn. Mm -hmm. Fresh blood. Yeah. And. If we if we want if we want to have the there's also the fact that through that through this notion of of um of Marvel Marvel and Danvers basically having a um a mentor and student or parent and child relationship, um, you other Cree would look at that kind of thing sideways and, well you know you know me I love I love an excuse to put to put in a tavern fight and there you go. <laughs> well. And it, and it could go further than that. She's new to this group. She's new to these people. She doesn't know them very well now that she's in this squad. And she's already gotten so much personal attention from the squad leader. Um, not only is it going to be, you know, mentor, mentor mentee, parent, child, looked at weird by Cree in general... The squad themselves is going to have some thoughts about that. There are some that are going to understand because they understand Marvel. Like, oh yeah, Marvel's a cool guy. Marvel likes to make sure that the the most vulnerable around us can keep their own so that they don't die on the battlefield. And then there are going to be those who go, "Why does she get all the fucking attention and not me?" And that's going to lead to further instigation and and internecine conflict. Oh, that would also make. Uh... It would also make the storytelling a lot better because, yeah, she has a lot of power, but she can't learn to con or she can't control it right now. And again, back to if you're going to introduce things in the future, yeah, you don't introduce uh, somebody at their full strength, you know, within their first iteration. Mm -hmm. So it it gives her it gives her something to strive for, to become stronger, to realize her full powers, and then realize how. Uh, how dangerous the enemy can be, and at the end of the day, okay, yeah, you lose, you realize that this is bad, but it also gives you a reason to fight. It gives you a lot of room for character growth. I mean, that you know, just introducing her in that type of sense would make for a really compelling character, especially in the sense of how Marvel uh, characters, as you guys have already described, where it's supposed to be something relatable. Mm -hmm. You have all this great potential, but you haven't realized it yet. And then this event happens to you, and there's this big bad that you feel like you can't overcome. And so you set out on you know the proverbial hero's journey to become stronger and overcome that big bad. I mean, that would be a great setup, especially post-Endgame. Yeah. Uh, and th there's a... 
There's a reason that we commonly come across this setup in our reconstructions time and again. It has a lot of potential for a lot of exploration and character growth. Mm -hmm. That's why we use it so often. Yeah. It's well, not it that works. We're, yes. Tropes are... There's, a, there's an article on TV tropes. Tropes are not bad. For all of you who say you overuse these tropes, go read it. Yeah. <laughs> but... Like, it, again, it, that's that, the thing... Well, what is the hero's journey if not for the journey? Uh, you need a goal to strive for. You need an, an enemy to overcome. I mean, that uh, is just such a classic thing throughout human literature. I mean, go back hundreds, if not thousands of years. I mean, this has been around for a long time, and it makes for compelling stories that people relate to for a reason. Yeah. Yes. Now, uh, yeah. Now, um, one of the one of the things that one of the things that I would that could be easily established during da during downtime is the, is the fact that there's that um even even though even though there's even though plenty of people acknowledge that that da that Danvers is someone who has who has a lot of potential and ha and has a lot and and is and is able and was able to and was able to take to the modifications extremely well um She's she's also gotten a lot, and I mean a lot of pe of people in trouble or inadvertently hurt, and that, and that, and that's what, and um, be and because of because of that, there's been, there's been plenty of fights, but there's been but there's been plenty of instances where a f where in her in her experience where a fight has happened, and she's ended up having to get lec lectured by Marvel. Um, so we're giving her Superman syndrome at this point, afraid to break a world of cardboard. Um, I'm not go. I'm not going with. I'm not going with that. It's more of her recklessness has gotten a lot of people in trouble. And yeah, I will. I will admit that I was. I was tempted to set up some kind of scene where she tries to do. A, she tries to do the biggest blast she can with her hands, and ends up ha and ends up getting the noisy cricket treatment. <laughs> You really like noisy cricket scenes, Monk. I li I, li I like the, I've always liked the concept of powerful but very vol but very volatile kind of kind of equ kind of equipment. It's a it's an it's an it's an easy gag to utilize and it's a reliable gag to utilize. So you like plasma weapons from the Warhammer Forty Thousand universe? Gotcha. Um. As long as long as you can get some sort of physical effect that isn't just you ex you explode. Um, so melt the pistols. I do like the sound rails, noise, Tokyo. But <laughs> rails. But the, the point. The point is, if we can't, if we can't do the whole knockback, we can just have it be be collateral damage. Almost, um, almost gets her crushed. Um, because she's not paying attention to what she's blowing up, and it all starts coming down around her. Yeah. Well, another That's approach you could take is that. I mean, if you're comparing her to uh, her peers, even though she, if we're going with someone like, yeah, Carol Danvers, uh, Captain Marvel, even being restrained, she is just that powerful and she thinks her peers are going to be able to keep up with her, that she thinks, well, they can keep up with her, so she ends up exerting herself and they can't, and the it results in bad things happening, maybe people dying, and you know, maybe that gives her a bit of a complex or something to overcome. I mean, there's well, always that possibility as well. Well, the, the problem is with the introduction of Marvell as her mentor and him being very, very willing to lecture her, uh, she'll have an understanding that uh, her powers are not like you know the other power that the Kree uh, have, and that she needs to keep in mind that these people around her may not be able to take what she can. But if she's reckless, doesn't that present a perfect opportunity for her to actually be not just lectured, but actually severely reprimanded? And well, it's like, you, look, you're not you, like everybody you can, else. You can get the same effect by her being completely thoughtless rather than thinking people can keep up with her. Just forgetting the fact that they can't is different. Mm hmm in the heat of battle, she doesn't even think about it. She just reacts because reckless because she's recklessly impulsive, and in doing right. so, majorly harms and or possibly kills other people that she shouldn't be, and mm -hmm. that gets her the same 
the, the it gives you the same effect with a subtly different uh, cause, but that subtle difference is uh, immeasurably huge in the grand scheme of things. No, fair enough. Mm -hmm. I, I was just thinking it would be... I know this is kind of very twisted, but I like to tell very dark stories. Well, if someone was just, oh, hey, I'm yeah, not realizing how strong they are by comparison to their peers. Hey, let's go get the bad guy and then accidentally I mean, ends up, you know, injuring or killing their comrades and then has to walk with that baggage and realizing like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not like everybody else. It, well... The uh, if if we really wanted to give Carol Danvers even more baggage, we would just reenact her storyline with Marcus in the alternate Earth. Oh, let's not let's <laughs> not say we did. I don't <laughs> like. Want, I don't want to think about that out later. <laughs> what was that flutter? I'll look that up later because I've up until now I've never even heard about that. But yeah, just, yeah. Just, you, you, you're the Wiki Walker Flutter. Just look up Carol Danvers on Wikipedia. It's in her 1970s uh, I, section, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> that, that was a thing. Like I said, <laughs> if, if we really wanted to give her a complex, we would just do the Marcus storyline. Yeah, I was um, trying to figure out a way to make her a little more relatable and endearing, not well, not what you're trying she, to do. Yeah, she she had well. I, <laughs> let's just give her all the trauma in the world. That's relatable and endearing, right? No, we, we have plenty of things to make her relatable. She's yeah. she's young. She's impulsive. She tried to follow a sense of duty and responsibility by joining the military, mm -hmm. and is continuing to try and follow that sense of duty and responsibility now that she's with the Cree. Uh, but she is having trouble adjusting. These these are all things that people, that audiences can relate to. Yeah. Now, when it, now, obvious, obviously, we need, obviously, we need to have, we need to have our paradigm shift kind of moment where, where the, where the comfort, where the comforts are, are thrown on their head. Now, I mean, that could be an introduction, an introduction of somehow a scroll got into the Cree military. Um, there's a, there's a there there's there's a couple there's a there's a couple ways that that I could that this could that this could be done. Um, one one potential one potential approach that 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 I that I could consider is uh, bec is a mission ends up going a mission ends up going bad and one of the other people on the squad who do, who doesn't who does not like who does not like her. Um, uses uses this as a as an excuse as an excuse to sell her out. Um, that's that is a potential. Um, but <laughs> I uh I don't think that that's impactful enough. That would be a little expected. Like, oh, someone who doesn't like her tattles to the principal essentially, and she gets she gets the suspension or whatever. Um, in this case, I think it needs to come from Marvel. Marvel himself needs to. You're, th um, you're thinking of doing it. the cast out like, th like, um, like Thor and Odin. Uh, no, but she needs to feel like the world has turned against her, mm -hmm. and the person who currently represents the world to her is her mentor. Mm -hmm. Mar, she needs to fuck up in such a way on a mission that Marvel takes her to task and says, "You're not going with us on the next one." You need to stay here. You need to figure it the fuck out. And until you figured it out the fuck out, you get you're 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 grounded. You're, and I mean that in the literal sense of you aren't flying. Um, you know when when you tell a pilot they're they're grounded, that's uh that's pretty heavy. Um, you know you're you are consigned to barracks until you figure this shit out. Mm -hmm. Because I've tried to tell you time and again and time and again and time and again, and it's like you've never listened. Please. I can't help you if you don't help yourself here, and you haven't been helping yourself. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it would always be, like, it's not Marvel being malicious. It's not, it's not like uh, he's being vindictive or spiteful. It's, 
out of concern for you and everyone else, please, you have to figure this out. Uh, yeah. If you really <laughs> wanted to be a dick. And... But but she'll still feel b- betrayed because Marvell has always been on her side. Mm-hmm. She'll, she'll feel like someone just stabbed her in the fucking back. Even though it is literally a, you are not safe enough for even yourself. Please, please learn that safety and then we can all be happy together again. Well, and go out and do missions and have fun and shit and mm-hmm. nobody will get hurt and everybody will make it back safe. Right. So I think no, it needs to come if from you really, If you really want to screw not only with the audience but also the character, what you do is you have a Marvel's team go off to do their mission, leaving her behind and she follows anyways and meets up with them only to realize once uh, the the climax scene happens that team that she she thought was everybody that turned out to be scrolls and it's marvel that comes back and you know kills the scrolls who are pretending to be her team and then then that's when she gets reprimanded saying you were supposed to stay back and because of you, you actually help the scrolls, and you're no longer fit for duty. That is, uh, I find that to be a little. I find that to be adding a little bit too much. That's yeah. That's that's going into whoopy territory. Mm-hmm. You're kicking uh, the dog at that point. I'm just saying, it's a good reason to kick her back to Earth. I, I understand that, but in in this case, we have more the. We're going more to. Uh, authority figure has consigned you to a temporary uh, imprisonment, if you'll call it that. And so now Hero sneaks out the window to go explore the world anyway. Mm-hmm. But haven't we done that with the Thor movies already? Not necess- not not in the same way. Fair enough. Um, Thor was kicked to Earth on purpose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was actually more thinking uh, Dark World and Ragnarok. I, I did. I do feel like we've kind of explored that plot line, but I'm not saying it's a bad one. I just trying, feel like it's a little to, overdone in the MCU. Um, trying to it's trying to search for trying to search for something for the sake of it being original um, creates more problems than it solves. Do it. Being original is nice and all. There are plenty of original ideas we are implementing here, such as the fact that Marvel is his own character now. Um, but if we wanted everything to be 100% original with this, it would cause inconsistency, plot holes. There would be a, a, lo- a lot of um, authenticity removed from from the product. Mm-hmm. We. Well. we if we follow natural flow and what works best, even if it's something that's been tread before, even if the basic premise is the same as another basic premise in a different movie, you can tweak the details so that it feels fresh and inviting. And in our, in our, in our case, um, there, the, the, the approach that it, the approach that I'm considering is I do want I do intend to do the whole the whole sneaking out thing, but um but the but as a bit of a twist on on the, on the myth, I'm thinking that when she that her attempt to sneak out that she that she stows away on on a on a on a ship in order in order to sne- in order to sneak out, um. She just—it's just unfortunately not the not the same ship that um, that Mar- that Marvel's cr- that Marvel's crew was using. Oh. And, it, and it's a ship that take that finds her as a stowaway and just kicks her to the nearest habitable planet when they find out. It's I would I would go with I'd go with either that or or that sh- or that ship gets gets a, gets attacked in a raid and she has and she has to escape to the nearest planet that she can find. Um, I think the second one's probably a little better. We, we've we got the whole uh, bad shit has happened, and then we've got the reprimand and the sneak out, and so even worse shit happening to raise the stakes mm-hmm. and place her on Earth still makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, what if she just... What if she's in the process of doing all of the, uh, the intergalactic uh, fuckery, and 
at the end, it, she just ends up chasing a scroll, and that scroll just so happens to be on Earth. And that's how she gets back. And, and there's a lot of different ways you could do this. Yeah, but we want to... we Since we're going to be moving into the, the meat of Act 2 here, mm-hmm. um, you want to raise the stakes. So... For example, the way the way this could work, she stows away on the ship. It's going through, you know, a region of space near to Earth, mm-hmm. um, and is attacked likely by scrolls. Scrolls would attack it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or Jatari. And, and she, she, being herself reckless and impulsive tries to help the rest of the crew fight off the scrolls and blows a hole in the thing herself from the inside mm-hmm. because yeah she, that she, works again she didn't listen the whole point is you are not trying to find a safe way to use your power why mm-hmm. so now now not only has she gotten somebody injured or perhaps killed on a on a mission that went awry due to her recklessness, she has fucked over non-combatants. People who are not part of the Kree military, part of the part I would, of the I would, pro- I would probably tw- I would probably twist the knife and say that this is the equivalent of a of a scout team or a science team. Yeah. You know, someone people who are who are not involved in the main military for for the Kree and she is now directly responsible for what is going to be their impending doom. Mm-hmm. Um, she flees to the nearest habitable planets out of both grief and cowardice. She doesn't want to face the consequences. And there's only one person who can do the types of things that she just did on that ship. They'll know it's her. They'll, they'll, yeah. w- when the Kree investigate that, that, that breach and see it came from the inside out and see that Oh look, this looks exactly like how Verse does these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're 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 gonna know it's her. So not only is she going to the nearest uh, habitable planet because she has to now that she's not aboard a ship with atmosphere anymore, um, and you know, food and everything else, but she also right. has to. She also needs to hide. Yeah, she she feels like she has to hide now. And I would, it's like I'd probably I would probably go with the with the idea of her um of her of her crash landing so, somewhere on Earth because of the fact that um while while in, while um traveling while flying in space is is not is not new I'd imagine I'd imagine that up until this point her her attempts at space flight have been short hops at best this I this idea of tr- let's say let's say let's say that um. Let's say that the, that the ambush takes place in be, in between in between the rel, in between the relative distance of Earth and Mars. Um, that's still that's still a lot that's still a lot of that's still a lot of tra- a lot of travel for somebody who probably isn't used to being out in being out in space and having having their um po- having their powers up that much. Yeah, she's used them for burst for burst DPS rather than for sustained. <laughs> so by by the by the time she, by the time she breaks Atmo, she's just completely wiped and ends, mm-hmm. up, ends up crashing. Now you would th- you would think that the crash would turn her into liquid. That's that's the kind of thing that isn't going to happen because of, because of the treatments that she's gotten. Like I said, and also because. There's got to be at least a little bit of plot armor for our MC. Yeah, I'm go. Yeah, I would probably, I would probably go with the idea that um that the tr- the treatments that the treatments that she was get that she was given. We already we're already kind of kind of um hinting that she's a, that she's a bit of a super soldier. Mm-hmm. So because because of that, I see her as I see her as someone who is significantly more durable than she was as as a human. Yeah. Oh. Uh, on to- on top of that, um, there could also be the explanation that the the limiter put inside her is also sort of a life saver or life preserver, mm-hmm. has an emergency protocol right. for, oh shit, she's falling through Atmo and she's unconscious. Better deploy a field to absorb some of the impact. Yeah. Um, and of of course of course there's al- there's always the possibility of her landing in water. Which um, which 
It's gonna, it should wake her right the fuck up. It's, it's, it's gonna it's gonna hurt like a motherfucker. Be, as in, as anybody who anybody who's ever taken the high dive can tell you, me. Only if you belly flop, monk. I didn't belly flop. I cannonballed. Well, that doesn't hurt that much. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that that much. Come, come, um. Coming from the guy with a pain tolerance so high, he calls a broken wrist a two on the pain scale. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's like, oh, that's like somebody who lives in Memphis telling me that they're telling me that their cooking isn't that hot. Isn't that hot? <laughs> Fuck off. Hey, Rick wasn't here to do it, so I had to. <laughs> y- yeah. Um, but the but the point the point is through 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 this through this kind of se- through this kind of setup, she ends up um coming coming across coming across a I, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say a full on city but a but a bit of a small town um a medi- a medium sized city I'm thinking this I'm thinking just just using just using areas that we know I'd I'd say um I keep th- I keep thinking I keep thinking of of some of say Duluth or some or some place of that size not mm-hmm. not some not one of the, not one of the big not one of the big US cities yeah um, mm-hmm. And of of course of of course of course um because it's n- it's never I don't think it was ever outright said in the movie what t- what town she ended up f- she ended up falling into originally but um I'd say I'd I'd say I'd say one of the one of, because one of the fir- one of her first instincts um. Is to is to is to try is to try and f- is to try and get is to try and get a change of clothes that isn't going to be as conspicuous. So there there's two ways we can do this. We can do this um, the hobo route, i.e. i.e. Um, st- i.e. stealing from stealing from a shop, or we or we can do this the Terminator Two route. Uh, there's a third way we can do it. <laughs> And uh, it, depending on how rural the area she's uh, she's in is, she can steal it from someone's clothesline. Because are we still? Is this still taking place in the early '60s? Is that what we've established? Um, in in the in the original film, it was in the '90s, not in the '60s. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm thinking the comics. My bad, guys. Mm-hmm. Okay, so is this still taking place in the '90s? There were still clothes lines and wash lines then. There's still clothes lines and wash lines now. Yeah, I'd say I'd say I'd say that I'd say that it'd be it'd be it'd be a it'd be a pl- it'd be applicable because I'm pr- I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure, but at this at this point her at this point her mindset it, her mindset is just just keep a low profile of it. Event eventually the eventually the stuff on on the suit will end will end up uh, will end up getting tr- will end up getting tracked and and somebody from the Cree will ha- will sh- will show up and whatever happens after that happens. Yeah. yeah, but I I think the reason that she would go the whole taking from people's clotheslines route is the same reason that she's fled to this planet in the first place. Mm-hmm. It, it's all about the that word there, fled, fleeing. She is a fugitive. She can't go to any of the shops here because, well, she doesn't have their currency, and she'll know that. Mm-hmm. And she can't do the whole uh, "give me your clothes" thing because, well, she's trying to keep a low profile mm-hmm. so that she is both not accosted by the local people of this planet and not found quicker by the Cree. Yeah. Um, so, so stealing stealing clothing. Makes more sense. <laughs> I will. I will admit yeah. that when I visualize what <clears throat> sort, what sort of town that she fell into, I keep th- I keep thinking of some of some sort of some sort of coastal town, um, whether it be whether it be some place in Maine, whether it be some place in Washington, some place that has a that has a healthy um, fishing culture. I, I imagine. I actually imagined her fa- falling into the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, if we if we want to go if we want to go with the med, we can go with the med as as well. The, um, the point the point is we need um, for what I, for what I have planned next we need some sort of docker culture um, well 
again, uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, and any of the any of the coastal cities there is pretty. Dude, she's a pilot dropper in Alaska. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. I know I'm an asshole. <laughs> also, I gotta. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be my last statement for the night, though, because I got to bow out, guys. All right, so, all right fun. man. Stay frosty. Peace out. All right. Later, Later everyone. Yep. <laughs> but as tempting as it would be to put it to go to go all the way up to Alaska, um, who the hell is going to be <laughs> hanging up clotheslines in in fucking Alaska? No one. No one. No. Which is no again why why I said the Mediterranean. It's nice and warm and sunny. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, Greece mm-hmm. or Italy, somewhere around there. There's a- actually a lot of the coastal cities around there still have a a pretty big dock culture um, because they're all big on seafood. So, uh, you know, a- a- anywhere in the Mediterranean like that would work. Um, yeah, if we if if for budget reasons we have to film in the U.S., um, I'd go with I'd go with um, some place in Maine. Yeah, you could do that, but uh, there's going to be less uh, clothesline culture in Maine. I, I was thinking, I was thinking either either Maine or so, or some place or some place on the on the coast in um, Washington. Again, Washington would probably be better. It would probably be uh, better that way then. Yeah. Um, even with the rain, there are still people who sometimes put their wash out on clotheslines. So, yeah. again, uh, yeah, that that could be done. Again, the whole the whole the whole point is because um. Because I I could after 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 trying after trying to set, you know how you know how I've mentioned I I like a good I like a good tavern fight and I, um previ- previously they did the whole thing of her of her um of her taking da- taking down a str- a straw man version of somebody asking her to smile as they as some sort of take as some sort of take that because I am woman hear me roar um. I'm doing some. I'm doing something close to that, but we're actually going to make sense. Um, you mean it's not going to be a ham-fisted attempt at politics? What ends up What ends up ha- What ends up happening is she is um she ends up she ends up going in she ends up going into into a into a um, pub. Um, mm-hmm. Not, not, for, not for anything. Ju- just, lo- just looking around the area and tr- and trying to maintain a low profile. Um, mm-hmm. But, so, but some, tr- but you have the t- you have the case of the, of the troublemakers who dis- who decided to accost somebody in the place and yeah, typical rowdy crowd. Yeah, she gets wrapped into it with the whole notion of look at, of tr- of trying to keep a low prof- profile and trying to play negotiator, saying I don't I don't want any trouble. Um. And, and man. ends up get ends up getting it ends up getting ends up getting dragged into it. Somebody, somebody um gets gets a little bit too close, and she re- and she reacts, um not not through any sort of blast, but just um punt, but just punching him a little bit harder than she probably should. <laughs> yeah, sending him across the room. Yeah. Yeah. If we if we have to if we have to do the cut of somebody flying out somebody flying outside of the place that'll work as well. Mm-hmm. Um, what I have what I have nicknamed the Dragon Pow because I'm what because I'm one of the few people who remembers um, King of Bandit Jing. <laughs> I've probably dated myself by referencing that anime, but I don't care. Uh because everybody could use a Kier Royale. Yeah. Um. But the the point is the the head the head of the place um. The, the um see, sees how quickly that how quickly they had taken care of that situation and the and it, we can easily rationalize it that the rowdy bunch are are the town um troublemakers. Mm-hmm. Um. And she and and offers her and um. And off and offers her a job as a as a essentially as a bouncer. Yeah. Um, and hey, if you do this, you can live in the upstairs loft, and I'll feed you. Yeah. And and um. Since since now, yeah, she is trying to keep a low profile, but on the other on the other hand, on the other hand, you can do, you can do the whole get gag of after hearing that offer, it's like no. 
I don't want I don't want any tr trouble. And as as soon as she finishes saying that, you hear the, you hear a stomach growling. Uh huh. Is it is it an is it a, is it a well worn cliche? Yes, but it but it also helps est establish the point that yeah, you may want a low profile at the same, but at the same time, you gotta eat. <laughs> you may want a low profile, but uh, your body says feed me. <laughs> Um, and I'd and the, and I think I think that's I think that's a good spot to set to set up the kind the kind of downtime the kind of downtime um af after after the second and this is this is where we can start to integrate aspects of the greater MCU into things um namely yeah namely that um the the way I the way I see it the post Thanos Earth, even at, even after the time heist in Endgame, is a period of uncertainty. Beca mm -hmm. Because um, a lot of a lot of people are de are dealing with the fact that for a for a while they were coping with the loss of so many lo of so many loved ones and now and and all of them now back, but also the fact that the that the heroes who had who had who had been at the forefront for the past ten years. Um, have have Ret are are now gone, and in their place are a bit, are a bunch of new heroes. Yep, who retired. Yeah, and yeah, shield shield is still around. Fal Falcon is Falcon, and the Falcon is being the, is taking the role of Captain America's successor. And you st and you still have the pr you still have the presence of Wak of Wakanda. So it's not like heroes are gone, but it's just that without the ones who have been who have who have a tr who have a proven track record the he the heavy hitters a lot of people are uncertain players have changed mm -hmm. and i now um this brings this brings me to one of the thing that ha that happened in happened in the second act and that is um that is da that is danvers meeting with n meeting with a young nick fury now, obviously, we can't do the young Nick, younger Nick Fury with both eyes in this case. But do we still want to have it that she that she ends up meeting up with um with Fury? Um, no, I want it instead that Fury is having her, uh, or is while not having her surveilled, is kind of keeping an ear to the ground because he heard about this, you know, new bouncer who seems really strong even for her size. Mm -hmm. But it, but it's just rumors now. And Shield still follows the rumors, but they don't follow the rumors, whole, like whole hog having somebody surveil you twenty four seven, until they've confirmed that these things are just not things you should be able to do. Yeah. Um. Oh. So maybe maybe we'll get a small cameo of Mister Jackson himself going. That's that's interesting. Keep an eye on it, or something along those lines. I would, pr I would probably, ha I what I would probably do in this case is, ha is have it that one of the people who's been in and out of the bar and is, and would be a blink and you miss it, um, person who's just kind of been, kind of been in the background of the place, was, was, um, Maria Hill. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Since. While while Fury while Fury would have would have it would have a would have a keep watch from a distance, Hill would be the one who's actually who who's actually um get, who's actually on the ground getting getting her hands dirty. Yeah. Um. Now gr now granted, plenty of times in the comics, um, Maria Hill has been has been a complete bitch, but. I'm br but I'm bringing up I'm bringing her up here to est to establish her to establish. Her as the as a potential active face of Shield. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. Not necessarily replacing um Sa Sam Jackson, but more of more of the fact that he obviously can't be can't be anywhere, and and you can't always rely on Col. And I don't want to rely on Colson for an for another decade. So <laughs> no. Agent Colson all the time. As much as as much as I like Coulson, it um, it would make a it would make a lot more sense for Hill to be to be in to be um, in in this particular area that's a little bit further off. Yep. Um. Yeah. And 
through through the through this through this kind through this kind of thing you do you um you do have you do have a fair bit you do have a fair bit of back and f of back and forth between the between the bouncer not the bouncer but between the the tavern owner and and Danvers mm -hmm. um the th um I'd I'd ima I'd imagine that I'd imagine that e that um even e even with some of these things there are certain aspects that she, that she'd op that she'd open up with but she, but um she'd be very but she'd be very um mixing truth with lies when it comes to the details oh well, yeah plus the bartender being a bartender would be wise enough to know that not everybody wants to talk about their past yeah oh. yeah everyone does but the big thing the big thing that I'm going with with this angle is she is her her getting her getting a her getting a better a better sense of uh, of of humanity and this is also this is also where this is also where um where there where there can be there can be the option for su for some for some degree of humility um which brings me, that bring that brings me to one question. Mm -hmm. Would you have would you have it that some of the mental conditioning would start to crack at this point? Well, her being back on Origin Planet and uh, also seeing things that should be familiar to her and probably are familiar to her subconscious mm -hmm. would give her that sense of deja vu that could lead to uh, the conditioning beginning to weaken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, now to, to be clear, mm -hmm. she's been in this place before, but she's not high up on the street, and it's not her time to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. Thank you, thank you. You'll see me this Friday. Yes, I will. <laughs> and everybody will be everybody will be taking bets on how long it takes before we start fighting. Jokes on them. They're the targets. <laughs> oh, oh god. Um. Now, when it comes now, when it when it comes to. Now, obvious, obviously, we ha we've had the kind of settling down um, aspect that you're that you're going to see a lot in the in the second act of a work. So that so that bring that brings me to that brings me to um, how to how we ra how we raise the stake. How we we've ar we've already uh, we've already cleared the board. Now we have now we have to start resetting the pieces. Um. Um. I say we uh. We get back to Cree High Command. Mm -hmm. They're telling Marvell that uh, they investigated the wreckage of one of their science cruisers, m merchant cruisers, whatever it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's definitely not just Scroll who attacked it. And they're sending Marvell to go find Danvers because it's her fault. Yeah, I I know that I know that there would be the temptation to have it that one of the people in one of the people in the town that she's settled in is a scroll. I think that's a little too easy. Yeah. Um, I personally think that they that they should send um <clears throat> Marvell mm -hmm. to get her back. I would uh, And I would, let me raise let me raise let me raise you one on that. They, okay. Um I would go with the idea that they that they would send an that they would send an accuser but Mar but Marvel would in Marvel would interject say, believing that she believing that it's his responsibility. Okay, yeah, so they'd get ready to start sending an accuser but Marvel would go, "No, nah, she's one of mine. I need to be the one to do this." Mm -hmm. And of course, they'll doubt him a bit because you were really close to her. You sure you can do this? They'll, they'll pro I could easily see the approach going that they'll that they'd agree to do it. But they would end up. But they would send an accuser to tail him from a distance, anyways. Yeah, 
But um, now, now we've established that this is taking place like the actual timeline of events. Her crashing on Earth is as post End Game. Yes. Yes. I'd, so I want to say at this, I want to say maybe maybe two years after um, after End Game. So then, Shield has had time to rebuild and reestablish, mm -hmm. and that that also means that both Marvel's approach and later when the accuser that was sent by Kree uh, comes a knock in, they're going to be accosted by Shield. Shield monitors space now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So what's what's going to happen there is. Marvel's going to get accosted and detained because he's going to he's going to be like, well, I have to find this person, but I don't want to tear apart your planet to do it. Yeah. Because Marvel's principled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll get we'll get the we'll get him detained by superheroes since he can fly in space unassisted without any, you know, any mechanics. So any technology. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's one thing. And you're like, okay, so he can he doesn't need he doesn't even need an oxygen supply. This guy is uh where hey um Avengers, um or whoever's available, come on, please. And so we're gonna get, you know, some of the familiar faces. We'll, we'll likely get uh Black Panther because of the uh advanced I'd nature say, of their society. I'd say, I'd say that there are um there are t there's there's a few people I can think of who would be like who would be likely Candidate who would be likely candidates for this detainment. Um, Black Panther is Black Panther is one is one of them. Um, mm -hmm. I because I could easily see him pulling double du pulling double duty as a king and also a um a a advisor to Shield. Um, yes. The uh, the or because because of because of recent because of recent events, if we can't if because because involving involving the passing of his actor. Um, Shuri ends up ends up being the um, re ends up being a representative of Wakanda. Yeah. Um, yeah. As much as much as I'd like to use Chadwick Boseman in this regard, we have we have to <laughs> some something something some things just aren't gonna, some things just aren't going to be in the cards. Yeah. Um. But. The but um the other the the more obvious um candidate is um Falcon. Yeah, especially since he's filling in as the new cap. Mm -hmm. Him and uh, Bucky, because I I believe Bucky oh, and yeah. Him are mm -hmm. it, you could you could have a, you could have a bit of humor with with Fal with Falcon and Bucky playing good cop bad cop. Yeah, and um, obviously, when it comes to the actual representatives of shade of of, of, of shield management, yeah, um, you you'd likely see this is where you'd likely see your cameo from Coulson or from or from Fury. Mm -hmm. um, more likely Coulson than Fury. Uh, Coulson tended to be like the f the first face people met, and then Fury was the guy who just kept hounding the superheroes afterwards. Yeah. Um. So Coulson will be there uh, when you know the guys with guns and the superheroes are there as Marvel floats to ground and goes, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm just I'm here searching for an A wall soldier." Um, what the hell? Yeah, we've taken every you know Coulson with his dry wit. We've learned that not everything that comes from space is trustworthy. I'd, I, could, I could easily imagine that he he thinks that he's landing in a, in an uninhabited area, and is like say 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 in say in some in some sort of um, forest or some sort of clearing, and is clearing in Australia. Yeah, it's in Australia <laughs> because it, because well, the outback is empty, guys. And as soon as soon as he as soon as he lands, you hear that you hear the sound of like a of like a dozen of like a dozen guns cocking or powering up. <laughs> And of course, then you have your su your your superhero cameos coming in, and uh, and then Coulson finally, welcome to Earth. Do you have your passport? <laughs> <laughs> Marvel's just like I'm not here to do anything besides find an AWOL soldier. Mm -hmm. That's all good, but uh, we'll need you to answer some questions. We've uh, learned not to trust everything that 
comes out of the mouths of, of those from space. And he, I, you could easily have the whole gag of he tries to step forward in a in a peaceful in a peaceful offer, and th and that's when he that's when he he um he he hears he hears a, a bit of a bit of a step as people are preparing as if he's going as if he as if they're gonna shoot. Um, I am I am pulling the whole Mexican standoff kind of thing, and and of course after that you can you can have the old thing of all right fine all right fine I'll come I'll come with you just. Could you put all? The, could you put those things down, please? You're only well, and then Marvell would be like, "Thanks for putting those down. You'd be more likely to hurt yourselves with them than me." <laughs> Just because you know, yeah, <laughs> Cree powers, Cree technology, all that fun shit. Yeah. And so then, of course, we have our our whole good cop, bad cop moment. Um, in, the, in this, I would ha I would have Fal I would have Falcon being the good being the good cop in this scenario. I mean, he is the new Steve, so that does make sense. Um, well, no, he is the Falcon, and he's the new Captain America. He's yeah. not the new Steve. I should not say that mm -hmm. that way. Uh, but uh, uh, this is going to be sort of a simultaneous thing. We'll have a cutaway to the bar that uh, Danvers is now working slash living in. Mm -hmm. And a news report of S.H.I.E.L.D. has just completed some sort of secret thing out in Australia. We're not sure what it is, but they say that uh, more information will be forthcoming at a press conference at X and X such time. Mm -hmm. Danvers is like, what's S.H.I.E.L.D.? And, you know, the bartender's like, you don't know what S.H.I.E.L.D. is? And, you know, we get our little info bomb about S.H.I.E.L.D. and mm -hmm. what they did during the Thanos thing and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I, I, know, I know some of this might sound, might sound a bit exposition-y, but... There, but one of the secondary goals we're ha we're having with this hypothetical is is the is the fact that a phase th a, f a hypothetical phase three in this instance is uh, is us re is us resetting th is us resetting the bo the board and a set effect effectively doing a soft reboot of the MCU. Yeah. I know that but seems she... odd with how, with how often I've said I hate soft reboots, but that but we're doing it properly here. Yeah, and it, and also in this case, it's it is in effect um, going to help any newcomers to the MCU mm -hmm. using Danvers as the vehicle um, in a way that's believable because Danvers hasn't been on Earth. Yeah, so she wouldn't know what the fuck Shield was. She wouldn't even know about Thanos, mm -hmm. or at least yeah. the fight with Thanos. Mm -hmm. She'd be she'd be she'd be more um, aware of what happened with uh, Nova Squadron and uh, Ronan the Accuser during Guardians of the Galaxy, since this is post Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. uh, so she'd be she'd she'd know about that stuff and she'd know about the Soul Stone, but or not the Soul Stone, the uh, um, God, which was uh, I forget which Infinity Stone that is. God damn it! Mm -hmm. it? It's the purple one. The power stone, yeah. Power stone, there you go. Yeah. Um, brain is not all here right now. But uh, is essentially, she'd be, she'd be aware of that. Mm -hmm. She'd not be aware of, of the snap and the fight through time. Well, no, she'd probably be aware of the snap, because it was half of everything in, in the universe. But the Kree would have investigated and still found nothing. And then when the other half came back after the snap, they'd just be like, okay, guess it was just like time travel or something. Because the Kree wouldn't think of anything super cosmic. Uh, in, in the end, the the uh, she'd be intrigued. She'd also be reminded that this world also has its own military force, mm -hmm. and it would feel slightly familiar to her, only because you know military life, all that fun stuff. And then we go to the good cop, bad cop. We, you know, we get all the good cop, bad cop interactions. Now, noting, notingly, Maria Hill still is not present. She's still over where uh, Danvers is. Mm -hmm. She didn't go back to Shield HQ when Marvel fell. She was told to continue whatever her current assignment was. Mm -hmm. um, however. This is this is where things would start to start to catch up. 
as Marvell answers their questions, then asks questions of his own, and then you know tells them, "I'm looking for the AWOL soldier." Blah blah blah. Uh, and you know she's really powerful, and this is what she looks like. And that description would get back to Fury, who would have been receiving Maria's reports. And Fury would go, "That sounds familiar." Send the description to Maria Hill. And Maria Hill would be like, oh my god. And then, as Maria Hill is, is receiving this update, because, you know, this is all happening in, in different time zones, different times. Mm -hmm. The bane of your existence there as well, Monk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the whole thing becomes... Danvers is watching the public relations broadcast where S.H.I.E.L.D. is bringing forth this new representative from outer space they met, Marvell, onto the podium to say, well, this is, this, is who we've, this is who we encountered, we're talking to them, we're determining whether they're friend or foe, it seems that they're not a foe, which is good. And as Maria Hill receives the description of, well, who is essentially Danvers, Marvell steps out onto the podium on the PR, and Maria has her realization about Danvers at the same time Danvers has her realization about Marvell on the TV. Because you have to have that moment. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and all of a sudden, uh, Maria has this. Oh, I've got to get her. And uh, Danvers is like, Oh, I've got to run. <laughs> Uh, and at the same time Maria goes to approach her, she's gone. And it's in a big flash. And it tears open the doors, again, her recklessness showing. Yep. Uh, the bartender's like, oh, what the hell? And Maria is now running after her, goes outside and goes, damn it! <laughs> and says, she took one look at the, at the PR, at, at, at our public relations stunt here, at our, <clears throat> at our press conference, and uh, she ran. <laughs> And uh, Fury's like, that's okay. I had uh, I had the satellites on your position as soon as I sent you the description. Uh, we're, tr we're tracking her now. <laughs> and this is when you get a second action scene of... This is when you get a real action scene of the heroes versus someone from the Kree. Mm -hmm. Specifically, Captain Marvel. Or in this case, Carol Danvers, because she isn't yet Captain Marvel. <laughs> And so that's that's our that's our step into Act Three because the raising of the stakes is when the next accuser shows up, yeah, and essentially tells Earth, "Give us those two, or you all die." Mm -hmm. Essentially, and you know that also gets a that also is a good time to bring in an explanation of what exactly a Cree accuser is, because let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy didn't do a good job of explaining that. No, they just brought in Ronan because Ronan is is the is the poster child for the accusers. Yes. Yeah. They brought in Ronan because he he because he's the poster child and he makes a good antagonist for the Guardians, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it's it's at this point we've stepped into Act Three. Yes. Uh, Marvel. Marvell and Danvers are going to reunite after uh, she doesn't lose, but doesn't win. Like, she gets cornered, but she doesn't get knocked out or anything. She just realizes she's surrounded, and then Marvell shows up at the line, you know, the whole police surrounding the person who's a danger to themselves and others, and the loved one shows up and breaks through the police line and goes, yo, 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 wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have that scene, cathartic scene. Marvel, uh, Marvel showing up and and helping her at that last moment, and then, you know, but you hate me. You turned against me, and you know, no, I didn't. You just needed to figure out how to control yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, then she realizes that she did it again. She overreacted and and fell into it, and she's and she's drained from the fight and flight and. It's all together, you know. We're we're getting some catharsis, mm -hmm. and that's the point where Ron, where where the fleet of the accuser, whoever this accuser is going to be, mm -hmm. appears over Earth, 
and the shield satellites light up like Christmas lights, and Fury goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> and now, now we've moved fully into Act 3. The Accuser is here to press the highest stakes yet. Mm-hmm. Right. And when and bec- um now pre now previous now in the actual film when it comes to the whole recovering of memories um you have that whole scene you have that whole scene of her of of her basically bur- basically burning out the chip on the back of her neck um the the approach the, the approach that I that I'd go with is is since we're we're at Act Three, we're at we're at the lowest point kind of kind of scenario. Yep. And um, in the s- accuser is it is saying you will hand over that Cree and that woman mm-hmm. to us without question, or we will destroy your planet essentially. And um, yeah. I. One one particular idea that uh, one particular idea that I that I'm th- that I'm thinking of is um because ultimately ultimately the, ultimately that particular chip we'd need to get rid of it by the end of the film. Well, and we could do that with uh, her conflict with the accuser. If, if you don't want to do the burnout, we could have Marvell uh, remove it before she faces the accuser. That's actually that's actually what I'm thinking because. Th- there it um they the approach the approach that i'm thinking of is at is um like i like i said because of because of the kind of un, because of the kind of uncertainty um you do you do ha- obviously obviously a lot of people on earth just w- just wouldn't want any more want wouldn't want any more trouble after everything that happened dur- during the inf- during um th- during the incidents with thanos mm mm-hmm. mhm and Earth is tired of of otherworldly threats coming and looking down on them. Yeah, and if you want to do the thing of her getting run out of, of her getting run out of, of her getting reluctantly run out of town, you can go that you can go that route. But the point the point is, on some levels, she's ba- she's back to she's back to square one, but with a different context. I think I don't think it would be Earth telling them to leave. Mm-hmm. Um. I think that with Earth, uh, the they would be tired of being screwed with by otherworldly threats. Mm-hmm. But Earth would also know that they couldn't blame the people who came to their planet as the sources of those otherworldly threats. Um, the, Earth post Endgame is very not only unified, but uh, they're somewhat altruistic. With everyone coming back and understanding that it took more than just citizens of Earth to do these things, such as the Guardians, such as Thor, such as etc. Hmm. Um, and like you would have voices speaking up, say, like you'd have, you'd, you'd probably have the 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 voices of, well, if we hand them over, what? Like the the other thing is is they've learned not to trust the words of aliens, or at least trust the words of any alien that comes by. Mm-hmm. The, the mindset of much of Earth is going to be, what guarantee do we have that they're going to spare us, even if we hand these people over? Yeah. So there, what what's going to happen is, uh, Shield. Is like like Fury from the Ruthless Calculus of War is probably just gonna say just hand them over and make them leave. No, not Fury, but somebody from Shield will. Fury will go. Every time we've ever done what the bad guy says, it always gets worse for us. That's that's Fury. Fury is always gonna say mm-hmm. something like that because he's usually right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then from there. Uh, you you have 
the rest of of Shield's heroes, you know, Falcon and Bucky. You have the our our new Shield uh, consultant, the the King of Wakanda himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have you know Wanda. You have a bunch of people going. Handing them over would be like handing any of us over. Someone unique and powerful and precious, all of a sudden given to an enemy in the blink of the eye. Mm-hmm. They may they may not be from Shield, and he may not be from Earth. At this point, it would also be it would also be pretty evident that Carol is ex is a human from Earth and was, and we may even have that moment of uh, Shield did the background check and found out that she's a missing Air Force pilot. Because mm-hmm. um, they would have lifted her fingerprints from stuff she had ta- touched in in the bar room she in the bar she was working in and such, mm-hmm. and running through the and running those fingerprints through through the national database would not have been hard. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at that point, you know, the rest of Shield would be like, she may not, be, she may not, she may have been sp- spent so long away from Earth, and maybe a person that doesn't even know Earth is their home or doesn't even feel that Earth is their home. But we're also not the people who just turn everybody away when the problem's not ours. Mm-hmm. And uh, the heroes shield most of Earth. Um, even, you know, we'll probably get some cameos from from Tom Holland's Spider-Man and, uh, <laughs> and all that fun shit. Uh, as, we, as we see that, yeah, Earth is... Earth is very much against this asshole in the sky telling us, hand him over or die, and says, no, fuck you, we're not handing them over, and you're the one that's going to die. So, we'll get the whole, we'll get the the heroes helping to mitigate damage situation. Um, so we'll have, you know, a, a small, not an action scene a la Endgame, but it will be an action scene a la some of the Avengers stuff, maybe, of uh, various heroes stopping the Kree from attacking places on Earth, mm-hmm. where where they Shield then tells Marvel and Danvers, "Go take him down. You can do it." And then you know Marvel uh, talks about how uh, talks with with Danvers about everything that's going on and how the chip may may hold her back too much if she has to fight an accuser. And um, how he'll remove it. And then she's like, but what about control? And he's like, this is the perfect time to learn it, essentially. <laughs> this, this, this is that moment. If you can't learn it now, you'll never learn it. And it might, it might be better if we all die, if that's the case. He says with bleak, bleak humor, because Marvel probably has a, a dark humor streak within him at this point. Militaries tend to tend to incur, tend to have that just as a matter of course. Yes, gallows humor is prevalent amongst those who kill. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you know we have our we have our climax. We have uh, Danvers, uh, Marvel going into the main accuser's spaceship. Mm-hmm. We have Shield and the superheroes. Stopping various Kree incursions around the globe because now they've been told "fuck you" in a very uh, uh, resounding way. And I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure the accuse the accuser in this instance um, sees this as a perfect reasoning to just say, "you know what, screw it, blow blow them up and be done with it." Yep. And. Obvious, obviously, because obviously because of that kind of thing, you can ha- you can have. Would you, would would you have would you have it that it's that it's a two on one fight against an accuser? Yes, absolutely. This is a this is a this is a an act of master and student, mm-hmm. mentor and mentee, uh, surrogate parent and foster child. Mm-hmm. Um. Defying, first of all, the Kree military, so Marvel can never go back after this either. This, the, the, there's no way that that the act of Marvel 
uh, they, they, since they sent the accuser after him, they, they never wanted him to come back in the first place. Mm -hmm. He knows that. Um, and this is, so this is going to be Marvell, who has the most intricate and uh, nuanced control over his power because he is a veteran and he's been doing this forever. And the entire reason Danvers was given to him was because he does have some of the best control. And Danvers, who is just a font of raw power. Mm -hmm. It's going to be this, this intricate fight with the two of them. And um, Marvell's going to get hurt so that uh, Danvers can have her big damn hero moment. Because that's going to happen since this is a, a story about her. Yes. Now... Oh, um, I know. Th I know that. Um, I know that Doku had earlier said that she that she ne that she needs to lose. Um, I disagreed even then. I for for ah. me the the approach the approach that I'm con that I'm considering is that while while it's a t while it's technically a win, it's not a dominant win. Yeah. It is. She, it is. She. It is a by by the skin by the skin of by the skin of her teeth is ba is barely standing up kind of win. Yeah, she, she. You know, Marvel gets hurt. She goes to protect him from the accuser killing him, which of course leads to her getting hurt. Mm -hmm. And it is only by by the barest margin of victory, uh, snatched from the jaws de of defeat. Yes. As opposed to the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> um. Now, af now after the f after the fact, I think I think um, I th I think the counter would be would be enough for would be enough for the Cree to say it's it's time for a, it's time for a retreat. Mm -hmm. The the accuser uh, the and the accuser would be heavily harmed. Like this is this is going to be, uh, she pushed back the accuser, hurt him enough to knock him unconscious, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even leave him wounded and maimed, giving him reason to come back in a future movie. Yeah. Um, specifically, that accuser mm -hmm. who who will just will just name for convenience's uh, sake um, the vengeful accuser now mm -hmm. because he is. Um. It's also going to let Kree High Command know that uh, this planet, this one little planet, could be a big problem. And if they're a big problem for the Kree, they're also a big problem for the Scroll, which means there might be Scroll there. So we're going to get the, the tie-ins of the Kree Scroll War, and we're going to have the Secret Wars stuff mm -hmm. all coming in. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the resolution on the Cree end. They this was a loss. They lost units. They lost men to what is essentially a smaller, more technologically, uh, more technologically, uh, uh, yeah, backwards planet. Um, that seems to also weirdly have strange a, a lot of strangely empowered beings, and. That's uh, that's going to resolve that side of, of the Cree thing. Mm -hmm. uh, back on Earth, uh, Marvel is going to be treated medically, and that's going to be weird. But you know, we have Wanda to um, plot plot nar plot nice his healing because it's Wanda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's made she's made of plot holes. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and we also have. Uh, Danvers, who uh, Maria Hill finally approaches her because I, I, that interaction needs to happen. Maria's been watching her. Mm -hmm. Maria goes, "Hey, look, nice to meet you. I'm Maria Hill from Shield. Blah 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 blah. By the way, we found out you're actually originally from Earth. Here's you know your old dossier. Your uh, you know your all this thing about you, your your name and etc. Uh, you're ex-military here." Um, you know, so you can reintegrate if you if you want to, and and of course at this point she she's not going to care about reintegrating. She's she's not of neither world at this point. Yeah, but Earth helped her, so she's chosen to ally with Earth. Mm 
Um, and with that, uh, I don't know. Should we go the 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 really cheeky comic book routes of naming characters through coincidental naming? Mm, that has as uh, I'm tr I'm trying to think of how often that's been done in the MCU, and not my by much. No, uh, yeah, it hasn't been done that often. I mean, the, like, big, it's the, very big, the big one is, of course, at the end of the first Iron Man, but beyond, but beyond that, not really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm thinking, um, in the military, mm -hmm. uh, she. Let me let me check the Air Force ranks really quick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So she she would have been a commission a commissioned officer as a as a pilot most likely, mm -hmm. and maybe she even made captain. Captain Danvers. Yep. Yeah. And uh. And the coincidental naming part uh, comes from the fact that uh. Marvel's name is well Marvel. That that actually is from the comics directly. That she's Ms. Marvel because of Marvel. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it, it's like someone comes aside that says, you know, his name only almost sounds like the word Marvel, which uh, you know, you guys truly were a Marvel, a, a sight to behold, and you know, something something cheesy like that. Mm -hmm. we, we need a little we need a little bit of cheesy catharsis at the end of this very serious movie. Yeah. Uh, and so she find you know she found out she was a captain and you know Mar and she feels close to Marvel but she just doesn't doesn't want to just take his name so she's like yeah sure I'll be Captain Marvel mm -hmm. and then of course Shield approaches her asks her hey you want to join Shield you want to join the Avengers she's like nah I'm my own thing but I'll help you guys out from time to time and uh, and you know we get we get uh, a few months later scene where everybody's healed up and ready and and of course Marvel has informed Shield and, and the world's governments now that the Kree know you're here and know what type of threat you are they're not going to stop until they've either subjugated you or destroyed you <clears throat> and so Shield and the heroes are all going to be uh, going okay yeah we um. We know what to do in that situation, don't we, guys? Mm -hmm. And you're going to get the assembling more heroes stinger. Yeah. You may even get a stinger from uh, the Guardians and Thor, since Thor's hanging out with the Guardians. Mm -hmm. uh, Thor, Thor, get, Thor gets a letter from Earth, an interstellar letter. It sounds like there's going to be a new war up, up brewing. Mm. <laughs> and of course, you know, Star-Lord's like, who cares? Leave me out of it. Thor goes, it says here they'll pay us well. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, Rocket's like, they'll pay us? Well, now you're talking! Because, <laughs> of course, the Guardians of the Galaxy have to be the goofballs. Mm -hmm. And, of course, at this point, um, Fat Thor is not Fat Thor anymore. He's semi-slim Thor. Yeah. Still work working his way back to his god bod. Um. You could, yeah. you could probably you could probably have it that he that he's t that he's turned part of the ship into his own little gym. And um, <laughs> him and Drax work out there all the time. Yeah, Drax is like this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, of course, Gamora Gamora hates it because it, it it funks up the ship. Sweat sweat in that small of space is never good. Yeah. But, and, uh, and she, but unfortunately, she's out. She's outvoted. Yep. And then, of course, um, the continual Star Lord versus Thor thing. Mm -hmm. um, Star Lord tries to lift some of the weights that that both Drax and, and Thor use. It doesn't as, go like, well. <laughs> he he no. tries to lift it. He tries to lift it to throw it at him. Is we aren't going, and that's final. And then instead trips over, and that's the end of that little scene. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we get, we get these little cameos from some of the people who are still involved with the MCU, but are no longer on earth. Mm -hmm. 
and that's a that's a small set of stingers to set up for the next phase of movies of individual movies to to move these people closer into their positions for our big uh c conglomerate movies of the kree scroll war and secret wars mm -hmm. now get now given given that given that um this is there there is what there is one final um one final tradition that we need to address and that is the post credit scene um I'm I have I have no desire to have I obviously it's way too early to ha to have some sort of gag of of um the, of them just quietly eating shawarma. <laughs> oh yeah. Um I, shawarma yeah. is delicious. I've had shawarma. I eat shawarma regularly. Oh, I oh, I know it's I know it's delicious, but ha but it's too early for that kind of gag. So right. They already did that gag. <laughs> I said so, I said an equivalent. I didn't say replicate it. Oh, oh yeah, fair enough. Let's see. Uh, yeah. So, so maybe an equivalent, an equivalent. Uh, what I'm seeing or scene of Marvel and Captain Marvel discovering slash rediscovering uh, Earth cuisine. Um, actually, I actually I had no I had no interest in doing that in doing that kind of scene myself. The, okay. See, the scene that I was more interested in do, in doing in doing personally is is some is some equivalent to to uh, when t to when Tony was saying I'm putting a team together. Ah, um, you know, rec you know, some some sort of recruitment. Re granted, we granted we kind of we kind of have we kind of had that with with the with the end when it came to messages being given out to up to. Some to some of the some of the um, allies who aren't on Earth. Mm. Um, I'd say I'd say I'd say one. I'd say um. Given there's um there's a cup there's a there's a f when it comes to when it, when it comes to the whole putting a team together I'd rather it I'd rather it be with I'd rather it be with somebody who's who's not yet who's not yet been established. Um, who would who would have who would have been who would have been established in a in a um in a fit in a fit in a fit in a phase four in our in our hypothetical phase four um and uh, of the, that's what that's certainly that's certainly one possibility although although um that although that create that creates other issues but one but um one other, one other one other potential th potential thing is sent is um since they are since they are lo they are looking for, looking for a looking for allies um you can you can have it you can have it dropped that Loki who's been who's been a who's been a wall for years by this point um there a le a lead is a lead is put up on wh on where he is. And obviously, some obviously somebody who's a master of master of trickery would un, would understand uh, would understand how to have a at least have some degree of understanding on how to deal with the um, a shapeshifter like the scrolls. Right. Um, and have him prove his expertise in the stinger. Yeah, yeah, I'd I'd ha I'd have it that he, I'd have it that he that he uh, that some somebody tr somebody tries to get somebody tries to get close to him and he's like I'm not falling for this shit you you you're a scroll so stop so drop the act <laughs> mm -hmm. um and you could um now I I know that there's been the recent se series with Loki invol involving the TVA which I which I think is a dud I'm ignoring that the uh, the approach that I'm going with instead is is that Loki is that um Loki is Loki is 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 approached by say um I want I want to say either I want to say either da either Danvers or um or Marvel which of course is going to have a is going to have a bit of awkwardness because the Kree have a reputation in spa in space mm -hmm. I think it would be Danvers at that point yeah you know, just just stepping just stepping in and just stepping in and 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 giving some sort of giving some sort of remark of 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 old habits die hard or so, or something. Mm -hmm. 
I'd, ima I'd imagine that Lo I'd imagine that in this Loki would ju would just assume that she's a that she's a Kree soldier and wants nothing to do with her. Because obvi obviously he obviously he's been out of the loop. Yeah, and and the the version of him that was uh killed by uh by Thanos. Um, snapping his neck and making you know the Hulk sc a scaredy cat. Mm -hmm. Uh, doesn't exist anymore yeah, due to his remember. teleporting away with the tesseract at the, in the time loop shenanigans. Yeah. Because um, again, we're ignoring the TVA; they don't exist. Mm -hmm. So the the approach the approach that I'd go that I'd go with is her is um is her is her recru is her recruiting um Loki. Although the big question is um. What is what is what would what would entice him? What do they offer? Mm -hmm. You could make that the uh, cliffhanger of the stinger. Yeah. Oh. And what would you give me that could possibly make me fight with you? And she raises like she raises her eyebrow and says, "Well, I know there's one thing." Mm -hmm. And you cut to his face in in silence and slight shock, and then that's the end of the stinger. Yeah, but. The point is the point is with this is that by by moving it into by moving by moving this particular film into into a place where it actually has room to breathe because it's not being suffocated between two between a mega event that's been building up for 10 years you have mm -hmm. the opportunity to to establish to establish Captain Marvel as her, as her own character some someone who who it who has the who has good intention but has to, but has way too much of a reckless streak that she has to um, overcome. Yeah. And it and um it and through and through this set up set up the set up the inevitable Kree scroll war and when it comes to that I would I would make it absolutely clear that both the Kree and the scroll are not nice. And yeah. Because. Right. When it comes when it comes to the when it comes to these much like how, much like DC's equivalent with the Ran Thanagar war um both both sides despite despite having good people the pro the problem is they ha they have uh, they have too, they have too much assholishness and just see, and just see earth as another chess piece in their in their conflict mm -hmm. um and because, and because of, and um, give, given that given what you mentioned, given the setup that we mentioned with that stinger, I'd prob I probably have it that, Dan that Danvers was Danvers was looking for the per was looking for the person, that is re that is revealed as a scroll, basically tra basically tracking him or her, and um, it's and it's just that it's just that Loki kind of beat her to the punch. Yeah. Oh. Now, of course, of course, of course, she's gonna, she's going to know who Loki is, even if, even if it only by a briefing. Because although we say that military intelligence is an oxymoron, that doesn't mean that people aren't that doesn't mean that people aren't briefed on on other factions. Exactly. Yeah. They'd they'd know about they'd know about they'd know about the Asgardians. On one, yeah. on one in one form or another. And they'd have dossiers on the on the known as guardian threats. Mm -hmm. And especially 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 having Asgard getting blo getting blown to hell in Ra in Ragnarok, that's gonna that's gonna be something that creates waves in the galactic community. Yeah, because the Asgardians have to relocate. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> even though even though they're even though they're on Earth for the time for the time being, that's 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 only that's only gonna be going for so long. But, but the fa the fact is, um, through through that you can have you can have the exchange that and the and the way it particularly ends, um, as far as as far as what as far as what sort of thing could be offered, um, I'm of I'm of the opinion that that's something that is pl that is played coy with throughout throughout this phase, that is it's never outright that um, because both because. Neither side, neither side would be willing to outright say what the what the uh, what the incentive actually was to get Lo to get Loki to jo to get Loki to join up. 
Uh-huh. I mean, Loki's not going to talk about it because that might give somebody else an advantage. And and um he and well he well he's somebody who's be, being the way he is. He's someone who's naturally inclined to keep it to keep any advantage that he has close to the chest. And two and two, um, well, Dan, our version of Danvers isn't going to blab about it because because for what reason would she do that? Even if it's something that's useless to her, there's n- uh-huh. there's nothing to be there's nothing to be gained from there's nothing to be gained from it, and it might compromise the tenuous alliance. Uh-huh. Um, because we've the key thing that we've est- I think we've established is that while while Danvers may have a bit of a reckless streak, she's not an idiot. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> she is. She is. St- she is still. She is still a soldier through and through. Um. When, but when, but um. When it, com- when it inevitably, co- when it inevitably comes to the to the whole thing with the se- with the secret invasion, um. I would have I would have the Cree and the scroll make a make a presence in that, and 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 both of them making presences up up until that point. Uh huh. Um. Now, if, now, um, that, 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 now, um, when it comes to, when it comes to, when it comes to the, fo- when it comes to the follow-up, because much like, much like how, much like how Iron Man, much like how Iron Man got two sequels, inevitably a follow-up to this particular movie would have to be done, and while we're, while we won't go into the full three-act structure of it, what would be, what would be the premise for a, um, follow-up? Would we have it that... That um, the accuser who got his ass kicked comes back as the vengeful, or would you go, or would you go with something else? So, I think the vengeful would be the stinger for this one, at least part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be a. I think it's 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 going to be one where. Uh, Captain Marvel is not on Earth because uh, two acts of this take place on Earth. Mm-hmm. So this one's going to take place somewhere out in space. Would, um, would you ma- have it? That, would you have it that she's that she's working along that she's working alongside the Guardians for something, or or even say, um, even say trying trying to work with Nova Corps? No, I think it's a. I think it's going to be a follow up to the Stinger from the first. I think it's going to be part of. Um, getting the MacGuffin Loki needs to work with them. Yeah, at least at least part of it. That'll be maybe the B plot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the A plot is going is going to be um, finding a way to, or, or or maybe finding an ally, a a very a very powerful ally, mm-hmm. someone uh, hinted to. That isn't yet well established. Uh, uh, something along those lines. When you say that kind of thing, the fir- the first name that came to mind for me was Adam Warlock. That could be a good one. Yeah. <laughs> that could actually be a really good one. Um, I mean, and that also introduces new conflicts as well. So yeah, I was because because I was trying I was trying to think about who about who would be and who would be an appropriate who would be an appropriate ally kind of character. Who who is it? Who is in the interstellar level? And the two, the two, the two names that, the idea of using someone from the Nova Corps is some is something that I'm not, is that it could be done, but I wouldn't be particularly fond of it simply because we'd be kind of double dipping with them. Yeah. Um, I... But somebody like somebody like Adam Warlock, that it that is that is a, that is a lot that is a lot more fe- a lot more feasible. I if um. If we had established the Fantastic Four by this point, I would have used the Silver Surfer, but the but that creates its own set of baggage. And truth and truth be t- and truth be told, I um I think it's way too I think it's way 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 too early to be bringing in something like Galactus. Yeah, Great. Galact- Galactus is a force multiplier that uh that is worse than Thanos mm-hmm. in many different ways. Um, 
but yeah, it could be it could be rumors of you know Adam Warlock mm -hmm. and uh, going out to to actually find him and try and enlist him in this three way what is now a three way conflict a neutral party that doesn't want either side to to succeed because they're both bad. And then the Kree and the scroll. <laughs> and yes, I am. I am kind of. I am kind of setting up that a big, a big reason that that um, Danvers is going to be off world for long periods of time is trying is trying to get allies to to help out against both the Kree and the scroll. Yeah. And and maybe go and help out people who are having trouble returning to Earth because they can't get their jobs done, eh, Star Lord? <laughs> yeah. Um, now, as far as far as the as far as the MacGuffin that lo that Loki needs, um, I w I uh, there's a, there's a part of me that there's a part of me that wonders if it should be some sort of some sort of um, relic that used that was that at one point was connected to Odin. I mean, that was my thought. I was thinking maybe Gungnir itself. Either, either, fi yeah. either finding it or, fi or finding a p or finding a piece of it. Yeah, like g the spearhead of Gungnir. Mm -hmm. And the reason he wants it is surprisingly wholesome. Remember that this man, even though he was not father by blood, was the only father he knew. Yeah. And he wants the spear piece because even though his father is departed, it would still be something to remember his father by. Mm -hmm. This Loki... Loki has gone through many metamorphoses over the the, pre, the previous ten years of, of MCU. Yeah. And we saw during uh, Infinity Wars and Endgame that uh, that well, Infinity War specifically, mm -hmm. that Loki was willing to go through an ultimate sacrifice to try and stop Thanos. He's he's he not died. he's not the he's not the double crossing snake that he was at the beginning of Thor. Even if yeah. he did act like that all the way up into Thor Ragnarok, <laughs> um, like he's 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 not he's certain. I think it. I think by the. I think by the time Infinity War came around, he had, he had more or less settled into the anti-hero role and pl and playing the straight man to his brother's antics. Chief among yes. them being get help. Yes. Ah. Oh. And so, I think with uh with that established, um, you know he gets he gets Gungnir, mm -hmm. and there's or he gets the the spearhead. And uh, I think just because Loki deserves the catharsis, there's a message inscribed on it for him. Mm -hmm. Odin. Like maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Loki knew that there was something on the spearhead that was important and thought it might be um, a way to reestablish Asgard or the way of making the Bifrost or anything of that nature. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but then it just turns out to be an "I love you" card to his son. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, is... You gotta hit them in the fields at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And so, that would be the... That would be the those would be the, the primary involved plot lines with, uh, with movie two. Mm -hmm. Now... And I, I, I don't know if it get a movie three. If it doesn't get a movie three, the, the eventual accuser will show up in the, in the crossover movie. Yeah. Uh, as, a, as at least a secondary, if not primary, antagonist. Yeah. Now, um, I would I would like to, given the fact that we've we've effectively we've effectively set up a new a new um, status quo when it com when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to the phase four canon, I'd like to I'd like to pick your your brains on um on how on how cer on how certain how certain projects might be interpreted in this co in this continuity, and some okay. of these we some of these we may do future. Reconstructions on in in the distant future. I don't I don't know. Um, okay. So, um, I'll start. I'll I'll um. So I'll start with I'll start with some of the series that have already that have already come out. Um, 
first one the first one being um WandaVision, is that one thing is that one that we keep or we nuke? Um, I don't know anything about WandaVision to be honest. Um It was that it it was them attempt a lot of a lot of that was I think the the despite how 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 it stumbled near the end, I think the intent was what was it having Wanda um trying to get over the loss of Vision. It's just yeah, it's, that was a major theme. Yeah. Um. Um. Just with a I would of, just with a lot of time, space, time fuckery. Um. It essentially happens in a bubble, then, doesn't it? It does. Mm -hmm. Like, it isn't really affected by anything happening outside of it, and it doesn't really affect anything happening outside of it, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say WandaVision happens. It happened in the two intervening years between the end of, end of Endgame and the beginning of, of this new Captain Marvel we've made, because that otherwise Wanda wouldn't be around to, you know, plot armor fuckery everybody when we need her to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Wanda is our get-out-of-jail-free card, guys, right? <laughs> I am, of course, joking. We will use her effectively and in a way that is plot relevance, mm -hmm. even if it is a way to keep certain people from completely being destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, Nick, the next one would be the would be um, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which um, well, keep. I'd I'd say I'd say keep, and I'd say one of the one of the big one of the big um. One of the big things to keep regarding it, obviously, the, a lot of the uber political stuff we're dropping. But one of the things that I th I think should be ke should be kept is the establishment of Bear of Zemo. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd say I'd say when I'd say when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to the na the narrative approach that I'd have with Falcon and Winter Soldier is in the in. In the film that we've in the film that we've created, we've kind of established the two of them as as um buddy cops. essentially essentially as buddy cops with Falcon trying to be the trying to be the straight man because he's trying to live up to Steve's example, where or at least the idea of Steve, or as yeah. Bucky, the cat the person who know the person who knew who knew Steve better than anyone, um sees is an irreverent yeah, dick. Yeah, sees right through it and and is a bit and is a bit of a dickhead. Um, yeah, he's, he's an irreverent dick because he knows that that's what Steve would want. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's more the fact that you have two people trying to li trying to live up to Steve's legacy, but they have different, in different ways. They have different interpretations of it. Um, yep. Yeah. And, and Steve and Steve himself would of course say, "Guys, be yourselves." Fuck. Yeah. But <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the. The um, but when it comes, but because of because of because of that, we can, Falcon and Winter Soldier can is something that also can exist in its own in its own little bubble more or less. Mm -hmm. um, just de just dealing with just dealing with smaller sca smaller scale threats. Cause yeah, I, I really I really feel that's that's what um that's what these kind of see these kind of um. These kind of Disney Plus shows should be utilized for in the same way in the same way that the Netflix series were utilized for smaller for smaller scale um, border borderline street and to national level event events that don't that don't need as many people. Yeah. Um. We've already established we're nuking the Loki miniseries because the TVA is dumb. Yeah, if we if we need to, if we need to have a Loki miniseries, I would I would probably ha I would probably ha I would probably have it that that um do it do it the way that we did the '90s Hercules series. It's just a variety adventure show. Yeah, <laughs> it's Loki: The Legendary Journey. I would I would probably do, I would probably <laughs> do that, but I'd I would have but. Actually, I I just realized what would, I just realized what would be a what would be a really brilliant but terrible idea. Um, What's that? Does anybody does anybody remember a a a show in the two thousands called My Name Is Earl? Yes. <laughs> the approach that I'm my, going with my is, name is low key, really. <laughs> the approach that I'm going with is for for this hypothetical Loki. After everything that's happened to him, Loki is tr is 
trying to turn a new leaf and trying to make amends to all the people he screwed over. The problem is, one, old habits die hard, and two, his ability to make amends um, needs work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either way, it needs to be a variety adventure show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> I just I just figured that 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 um that particular combination would be an, would be a compelling way to do it. Since yeah, you're 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 building you're you're building to some you're tr with something like this you're tr we're essentially trying to help. Um, push, push more and more forward the idea of Loki as a as a cosmic antihero. Yeah, I, I also think it would be <laughs> hilarious that um, when he goes to say apologize to Fury, uh, and he tries to Fury Fury in Jackson's best deadpans. You haven't done this before, have you? <laughs> um, although. What I think would be a great, what I think would be a great callback is in the is the is the two of the two of them having a back and forth in in some kind of in some kind of room, um, and it and the camera is kept close on is close onto both of them. After after which after which Fury who who thinks that who thinks that Loki is full of shit ends up ends up wa ends up walk ends up walking away, and um. And you ha and he ends up saying something to the extent of, "This room doesn't look familiar to you, does it?" He's like, "Why? <laughs> why would? Why would it?" And and ends up throwing a sh throwing a switch. And you remember you remember the you remember the interrogation room that got dropped in the first Avengers movie? Yeah. Same room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah. This yeah. This I know some people. Don't get me wrong. I have I. Have issues with the excessive quippage with a lot of, with a lot of the MCU, but I'm bring but I'm bringing up these kind of gags to show to show to uh, show that you can do it, but but still keep it within proper context. Because do I believe do I believe that Fury would be would be petty enough to to pull the to pull the execs to pull a similar gag ju just to just to mess with somebody to see it, to see if they're really le really legit or if they're or if they're gonna crack? Yes, yes I do. I mean, yes, of course, Fury would do that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's next then? Um, so now we're getting into the projects that have been. Now we're getting into a few projects that have been announced, but nothing's actually come of them yet. So okay. Some of these may not even come. May, may not even come to pass. Um, okay. And obviously, when it comes to the when it comes to the Black Widow movie that was brought up, um, we're not doing that. Be we're not reconstructing that because, um, or we're not reconstructing it in, the, in this context because the moment she's dead, do, she's dead. The moment to do that is past. If, um, if God damn it, Jim! I'm a I'm a doctor, not a miracle worker. Mm -hmm. She's dead, Jim. Um, if we absolutely need to, we can do we can do a we can do a we can do a successor kind of story um, later, but. That's but but that's beside the point. Um, mm -hmm. So the ne next was next is um, Thor: Love and Thunder, which um, even though well, even though we do, even though we've got an open slate with that, one of the things we do have is is that is their attempt to do Fem Thor. Are they really? That seemed that seemed to they be are. that seemed to be the approach that they're going with. Um, it it uh, is because Jane's back, and there's there have been set photos that reveal that it's possible that somehow Mjolnir is going to be rebuilt, and yeah, yes, you're going to rebuild a, a hammer made from the metal in the in the center of a neutron star. Good job. <clears throat> um. Uh. Now this does this focus on Jane? Is Thor really involved at all, or is it just called Thor because Thor characters are involved? Um, I'd say I'd say Not sure. because of the fact that we're, because of the oh. fact that we're dealing with a film that isn't even out yet, um, we basically have a clean slate on this. Well, then make yeah. it about what he's doing with the Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> 
I'd, yeah, I'd, or make it, make, it, make, it about, make it about a mission he does while he's with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Make it specifically about that mission to show how he's reforming and becoming a new Thor that is a better person or yeah. whatever. Um, I I can I can cer- I can certainly go I can certainly go with that. Um, Hell, Love and Thunder, make him meet Beta Ray Bill for one. <laughs> And then you know maybe one of his other love interests from the comics. We have yeah. We um. I don't think. Maybe I'm maybe I'm mistaken, but I don't think they ever used Enchantress in the MCU, did they? I don't remember. I have it. They they tried to with Loki, but it, with the Loki series, but they kind of they kind of pull, play that off as like as like a. Uh, is like the Young Avengers version of her from the version of Asgard that's apparently in Wisconsin. Yeah, we're not doing that. Um, I I would I I do think I do think that um. I think that I think that that something like Love and Thunder would be would be a perfect opportunity to to utilize utilize Enchantress as a as one as one of the people who Thor, who Thor was not exactly the kindest to in his younger days. Yeah. yeah, and see, seeing seeing him all of a sudden show up and and acting like and acting like a different person kind of kind of kind of puts kind of puts the awkwardness level back up. It does. Yeah. <laughs> no, I uh, that that would probably be a good a good tie in there. Just change it all up and make it part of a a, a mission with the guardians that uh, well, because it's going to be a feature length movie. Has something go awry because you know. As things tend to do with the Guardians, yeah. <clears throat> and then, of course, the the Enchantress is is going to show up, and that's going to maybe cause a new spark. Yeah, and I could eat, I because of the fact that I'm kind of doing the I'm kind of doing the jilted X with the with Enchantress. I could easily see her look, um, seeing seeing Thor and Gamora getting into an argument, and assuming that the two and assuming that the two of them are an item these days. And then, of course, Star Lord has his has has more of his crippling thoraphobia after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh. Make for good, make for a good gag. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Th- of course. After that, things end things end up escalating. Um. Yep. So moving past that, um, Doc- Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. That's actually going to be majorly affected by Adam our 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 want to bring in Adam Warlock through uh through the cap the Captain Marvel sequel uh video that we we outlined. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe he's introduced to the Soul World early before meeting Ca- uh, Adam and sees Adam there, but like only as a sort of a cameo because you know Adam Warlock does. A lot of things with the soul world, mm-hmm. um, and and you know, so there's there's going to need to be a few a few changes there. But I think, assuming that it's what it's going to be about, I don't know. Um, like I remember when this was first announced, people were all theorizing, "Oh, Adam Warlock, Adam Warlock." I'm like, why? He's not directly part of the Doctor Strange mythos. To be honest, it would be a better idea to introduce some in Guardians Volume. And truth and truth be told, um, even if we don't use the multiverse of madness, just have this be a Doctor Strange sequel. It mm-hmm. should it should inv- it should inv- it should be following up on that little t te- on that little um, post credits sting stinger that we saw in the first um, film with Strange, the one where he's yeah. meeting people in the 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 House of Sorcery at the end and being a consultant of sorts. Um, I'm more I'm more referring to the to to his supposed mentor deciding to, deciding that there's too many sorcerers. Oh yeah, yeah you could make it that. Out, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but regardless, I think it's it's going to need to hint at least at the the existence of Soul World and yeah. hint, hint that Adam is in, is involved with Soul World, mm-hmm. which gives us more context on why Captain Marvel would search for him. Yeah. Um, and then from there, you know, whatever else we're going to do with the main plot is going to be, you know, too many sorcerers, blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably re- I probably retitle I probably retitle it into um, I, w- I was into some some equivalent of some equivalent of witch hunt. <laughs> yeah, that would be an interesting one. Mm-hmm. Um, 
when it um when it now the next the next one that I have that I have on my mic that I have on my micro list in in this is um She Hulk. She Hulk. Yeah. Which, first off, when it co- when it comes to doing something like this, um, I'd ra- in I'd rather I'd rather ca- I'd rather cast somebody who ha- who has at least some somewhat of a bodybuilding background. Who they cast for Jennifer as Jennifer? Yeah, I can see that. Point of contention. Um. The 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 tricky thing is that is that is that um since since they went full prof- they tried to go full Professor Hulk with what with what we saw in in, in Endgame there's the, there's the whole there's the whole there's the whole issue of having to having to introduce that Banner had a relative and of and eventually using that to to establish um She Hulk. And I will I will right. note with this, um, we would be leaning more towards oh, more towards proper She Hulk, not the the kind of the kind of thing that it, the kind of thing that Image would draw. Ima- huh. Image Image Inc. as we as we know, not not the not that Image. Um, I'd I'd say I'd say that sh- I'd say that even. I'd say that when it comes to when it comes to this setup, um, she pro- she she probably she probably um, would e- would either tr- would either try and and um exp- and because because as I recall um in the comics she ended up get she ended up getting her powers because of a blood transfusion. Yeah. Um, Hulk. Is that is that something that we'd keep in this hypothetical or not? Um, no. Uh, with the way that the Hulk has worked in the MCU, uh, getting a blood transfusion from B- from Bruce Banner isn't possible. All right. So how how would you how would you go about it instead? Um, we might have to hail back to Edward Norton's Hulk movie. Uh, the fact that there was research ar- going around enough to make, well, as you know, the villain from that movie. Oh uh, yeah, um, abomination. abomination. Yeah. Um. So he really was an abomination. Um. I would say that that research, um, was still like just because Banner destroyed that one lab and killed the abomination in the end. Um, doesn't mean that the research wasn't backed up and duplicated by some unscrupulous part of the government, up to and including the Hydra elements. And that maybe this woman was an experiment by Hydra. Would I? I would. I could certainly. I could certainly go with go with that. It's... And then put and then put in cold storage, like essentially. Uh, she she's a sleeper cell or a cold store cold storage away or something along those lines. You know, Hydra made her. Hydra couldn't control her, so Hydra decided to put her on ice until they could control her later. Mm-hmm. Um. And and now that uh, you could you could say that part of the part of the reason she's found is because you know Bucky and and Falcon are are still looking and trying to clear out all of the Hydra influence from Shield and from the U.S. government and. Because that wasn't just destroyed in, in a, in Winter Soldier. Hmm. That, that that couldn't have just been destroyed in Winter Soldier. Sure, you got rid of a lot of elements, but not all of them. It's not possible. Yeah. Hydra is a Hydra for a reason. Yeah, and i i would I would say I would say in regard to regard to that kind of thing that um even because. She, with with some of the, with a character like She Hulk, we do have that same problem of not of not of um of not having their own no, their own particular um own particular rogues gallery. I but I would say that a character like her is is necessary for the kind of setup that we have, so that we have some degree of levity, since 
one of the big appeals with a character like She-Hulk is her being, well, fun. Mm -hmm. Oh. I would uh I would also say that this is a chance to give Hulk a love interest on his own level. Mm -hmm. And I think we could do it without a lot of drama. Yeah. Like hell, we could make this lady someone Banner knew before he became the Hulk. Mm -hmm. Someone that he was really interested in and who was really interested in him, but the like the the cables never crossed and nothing ever happened or yeah. came of it because because of circumstances. And now that they're both Hulks, well, they're the only ones who can withstand each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I? Why? This is this is the, this is flashbacks to Superman shotgun blast all day long. Yeah. Yeah. God. Uh, for those of you not in the know, the reason uh, the Hancock movie had the joke about. Uh, him shooting through the roof of his trailer uh, comes from a very old meme slash theory about how does Superman have sex with Lois Lane uh, because the involuntary muscle spasm would likely cause a shotgun blast and kill her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. so, so I, uh, I... Having having it so a Hulk is with a Hulk makes sense because they don't want to yeah. understand each other. Um, uh, why am I, why am I? What my mental Im one of my mental images immediately is the t is the time when the time when the Hulk um was ba was bang was banging Kane Marco i.e. um Juggernaut and the hotel room is just completely trashed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I uh, I wonder why that 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 could be, Monk. I wonder. Um. But now, um, one of the other ones that one of the other ones that's been mentioned was um was a Black Panther follow up called Wakanda Forever. I'd say this is one of the easier ones to handle because it would it would just it would just be it would just be Umbaku Umbaku's decided to decide to decide to make hit decide to make his move against 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 the other tribes, and. And sure, and Shuri, and Shuri has to be the one to step up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Against against the against the guy her against the guy her big brother could barely beat the, during his coronation. And now, yeah. And now you've got to fight him. The man, the man who the man who in the comics is known as the Man Ape. So, no pressure at all. And no pressure. Um. When it but. And some something like something like the Mar something like the Marvels. That's e that's easy. You can just have a you can just have a follow up just focused on Danvers and Marvel. Mm -hmm. Um. And when um the one the one that I the one that I'd say is the trickiest when it comes to this particular affair would be Blade. Yeah. What, why are we talking about Wesley Snipes? <laughs> they meant they mentioned that they mentioned Blade as as a potential as a potential future film for Phase Four, so I'm bringing it up here. Why would it be hard or tricky to handle? It's in t it's contained entirely on Earth, and doesn't go into space. And likely the only thing you'll need is a little bit of edge uh, edge cameos and such from. Shield slash other heroes, but nothing specific to them. Blade's sort of its self-contained thing in most cases. Yeah, um, I w I would I would say th I would say that um I would prop I would probably use this to kind to kind of to kind of set up the first ink the first inklings of the Night Stalkers. Uh huh. Um. <laughs> sim simply sim. Simply because, simply because I, because I can, e I can easily, I can, because um, as much of as much of a letdown as Blade Trinity was, I did like, I I did like the um, in, the interplay between Blade and Hannibal King. <laughs> um, I uh, I'm just still sad that Blade Trinity hasn't given me royalties for cock juggling Thundercunt. <laughs> I came up with that in middle school, assholes. 
Um, you and Tight Kubo both owe me owe me money. Yeah. Um. But I now I, um. When it comes when it comes to when it comes to doing Blade the um. I know some people would have the temptation of trying to do the exact same story with him and Deacon Frost from the from the original film. I probably that wouldn't doesn't go, make sense. I probably wouldn't go down that route. Um, Neither would I. I would. I would. Prob. I would. If we need to. If we need to have some sort of integration, I probably. W I probably would have it that. Um, it turn. It that at the end of it, it turns out one of the vampires that he that he had that he that he had just staked was not a vampire, but actually a scroll. So its body doesn't combust into flame after he stakes it heart, and he's like, "What the fuck is this thing?" Yeah. And stakes it a few more times, cuts off its head, and then he's done. Mm -hmm. Because you know it's blade. Yeah. The now it, the tr the tricky thing when it comes to do when it comes to doing blade is the fact that the version of the version of blade that's essentially become canonized over over the last twenty years is snipes. Yeah, and every time every t and the every time that they've had somebody not snipes play that character, it has always felt off yeah but that's that's kind of like um what happened with iron man and, and our uh robert downey um the pr prior to robert downey jr being announced as playing iron man um iron man in the comics while he may have had somewhat similar features was a uh, was a lot less like he is now. Mm -hmm. um, still a little cocky. Uh, definitely had an alcohol problem. I mean, that was even carried all the way over into Ultimate Iron Man. Um, and it it was when uh, RDJ gave such a grandiose performance that established such a character defining. Uh, behavior set that the comics started following suit. Um, Snipes did the same thing for Blade for moviegoers. Uh, I don't think the comics changed too much, though. They did. Tr they did try and they did try and ad the comics did try and adapt it, but a big a big issue is that um is that bl is that Blade Blade was never a Blade up until that point was never really a front and center character. Yeah. Um. He was a, he, he was either a supporting he was either a character who was featured in Tomb of Dracula or he was a supporting character in Ghost Rider. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the because because of because of that, I um. Although tr truth be truth be told, I I wish we were I wish in this particular hypothetical we were able to utilize the the um. The def the defenders because that would because that would be a much easier way to integrate Blade. Yeah. Because the big the big problem is Blade is a street level character. A lot of a lot of the characters that have gotten the full movie treatment, or e even series treatment, within within the MCU are not street level characters. The street, the street level characters that we had that we had seen throughout the MCU were during the Netflix run. Yeah, and that's that's pretty telling. They were Netflix series characters mm -hmm. rather than silver screen characters. And maybe that's the way to deal with Blade. Maybe it needs to be set uh, set as a Disney Plus uh, series rather than a movie. Honestly, that's the approach I'd go with. Um... If if you can get some of the old gargoyles writers to handle it, I'd do, I'd I'd bring them in. Although I'm and now I and now I've got the uh, I've got the uh, the gargoyle theme stuck in my head. Thank you. You're welcome. But over but ultimately, this kind of thing would have would eventually would eventually set up a a, a um a Avengers Secret Invasion um type of film. Yep, with all the new Avengers that were hinted at the end of Endgame, and all the people and allies that we've pulled through the other movies, mm -hmm. 
And potentially, even with a B-plot having to deal with Soul World and some infer- interference on there, because Soul World's actually a pretty important set piece. Yeah. And th- and um th- and of course of course if you if you want if you want to if you want to up things further with with an, with another phase that's th- that's the point when you could start doing stuff with um with with Galactus I wouldn't do, I wouldn't yeah. go, I wouldn't go that route per- I wouldn't go that route personally I, I would go ahead. I was going to say I'd get Galactus if you're going to go into a, a, a third round of, re, of, se, of semi-soft reboot. Mm-hmm. But that, but that, it, that is, that is, I think that's a nice little capstone to lead to lead things off on. And that's go, that's going to do it for this particular adventure within the monastery. Um, we will not be back with a geek with a Geek Watch episode next week because I will. I will be out of town, and um, so will I. And that that said, we, that said, I do have a few interviews li- lined up over the next few over the next few days, so keep an eye out for that. And there will be plenty of fun stuff coming along coming along the pipe, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers, present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.